The View on September 11th, 2021. On the 20th anniversary of September 11th, 2001. And while we remember it more in the thousands of lives lost on that day, here at West Point is also the opportunity and the honor they have to honor the heroes who rush to help and those who continue to choose to serve. There was no football that following weekend after 9-11, but today we feature all three service academies across CBS Sports, Air Force and Navy later, but we begin today in West Point with Western Kentucky and Army. Hey folks, how are you? Jason Horowitz, Ross Tucker, happy to have you with us here on the 20th anniversary of September 11th. Tina Servasio down on the field. We'll get to the game in a moment, which should be a really good one. But Ross, all the emotions that this country and everyone feels living in this country on this day, certainly here today even more. Well, how about the emotions I'm feeling just from that open we just did? That was unbelievable. It is emotional day, and it's a day that none of us will ever forget. A generation learning through history including the cadets who are taking the field with three first responders all with american flags onto the field at mikey stadium as they are fired up after a wonderful win last week against georgia state and bringing all that emotion here to west point for the home opener against a good western kentucky team as we turn our attention to the game itself 43 10 last week the win ross for army against western kentucky the offense for army was what you expect 258 yards on the ground did have a couple of touchdown passes a little bit more of a surprise you did get four quarterbacks but the defense was so good last year and again that the highlight last week against the panthers well that's one of the reasons why i'm so excited about this game the defense picked up right where they left off a year ago when they were the number one ranked defense in all of fbs football i, I mean you can't run on them less than two yards per carry. Andre Carter looks like one of the best pass rushers that Black Knights have had in years. And then this is exactly what they did last year. It's why they won nine games in the Commanders and Chief Trophy. Bailey Zappi leading a completely revamped Western Kentucky offense. And man, can he sling it. I've got like 10 pages of notes on this guy's stats. It is absolutely it? crazy. He is the active yardage leader in all of college football, over 10,000 yards passing, including those seven touchdowns last week. Tyson Helton in his third season, leading Western Kentucky, his older brother, Clay Helton, at USC. His dad, Coach Ross Tucker, in the NFL. Jeff Munkin, win number 50 last week. Fourth at Army to ever reach that milestone. And with more, down to the third member of our team, turn to Tina Servasio. Jason, I spoke to Army head coach Jeff Munkin early this morning when he arrived here at Mikey Stadium, and he said his players are well aware Tina, of the Tina. significance of this day, even though many of them weren't born on September 11th 20 years ago. But it's part of their history, and it's part of their future because these football players are cadets first. And that is why Jeff Munkin says Army is the real America's team, because when they take the field every week they play with courage they play with fight they play without fear representing the courage and resiliency of Americans and today Munkin says they're playing to honor those who die and celebrate those heroes who ran into the trouble Jason and Tina what a cause that is and those heroes who are all around the world as well including the folks at Camp Arif John who we are honored to welcome into this broadcast at US Army Central in Kuwait and we'll check in with them throughout the course of this broadcast. Jeff Munkin's team coming off a nine-win season. Ross, a lot of expectations for this team coming into this year. And boy, oh boy, did they put it on Georgia State last week. They did, as did Tyson Helton's group against Tennessee Martin. This should be an awesome game. I mean, these are two teams that looked terrific in week one. Look at this. this man, I live for this. Let's go. Well, and remember, cadets were here last year during 2020, but there were no other fans inside Mikey Stadium as we have the broadcast on CBS Sports Network, but they are juiced up and ready to go. Ross Army won the toss to third, so they will kick off to start this game and put that unit, that defensive unit, on the field. You know, a year ago, all the cadets were here, but they were spaced out throughout the stadium. It is so awesome to see all of them together again, jumping up and down, 
getting fired up for their first home game this season. Cole Talley set to kick it away. The junior from Rockville, Texas. B.D. Bishop, Jarris Stearns back deep to receive for a Hilltoppers team that has won all three matchups with Army dating back the last 10 years. A gorgeous day in West Point, a memorable one, and we are underway. Bishop calls for the fair catch, and the Hilltoppers will bring it out to the 25-yard line to start things off with their new quarterback, Bailey Zappi, the grand transfer from Houston Baptist, over 10,000 yards in his career. Well, and the craziest stat to me is last year, they played three FPS teams, did Houston Baptist. He threw for over 400 yards and 12 touchdowns in all those games. I mean, they're playing North Texas, Texas Tech. He's playing with Houston Baptist, lighting up FBS teams left and right. He's earned this opportunity at Western Kentucky. And he's brought the Air Raid offense with him and his offensive coordinator, Zach Kitley, as well. They come out throwing right away, get to the edge. That is one of the transfers as well. And Jared Stearns, as he is brought down, Right there at the line, the offensive line for Western Kentucky. He's got a good one in Cole Spencer on the left side on that three-yard gain. But it is Jared Stearns, the wide receiver from Houston Baptist as well. Yeah, and a flag on the first play. On well, the legal formation, that is Matt Overton, our referee from the American Athletic Conference on the fall start. So that flag there. Whistled, so they'll take him back and wipe out that three-yard play. But we're going to talk about this a lot today with Jarris Stearns as well as Bailey Zappi. There are four players who transferred to Western Kentucky from Houston Baptist. Yeah, the quarterback, three receivers, and the coordinator. I don't think I've ever seen that before. They brought the whole passing game over. They give it to Noah Whittington. Didn't play in last week's game. Takes it back out to the 24. Picks up four. The Hilltoppers as we revisit that offensive lineup. And again, this will be a test for them. An offensive line that held up very well last week with quick throws and Cole Spencer. But again, they're going to rotate a whole bunch of different receivers. We've already seen Jared Stearns, one of the Houston Baptist transfers. All he has is 152 catches for 1,200 yards and 14 touchdowns the last two years. On second and 11, Zappi, first official pass, and that's caught. Out past the sticks for a first down. Mitchell Tinsley making the grab and a gain of 12 past Julian McDuffie. Top of the screen is just an out route. McDuffie showing respect for the speed, playing off coverage. Tinsley just runs an out route right at the sticks. Zappi puts it right where it needs to be. He almost always does. Completed 80% of his passes last week against Tennessee Martin. Empty backfield, quick throw, near side. Another one of his receivers, Malachi Corley, broke a couple of tackles and took it out to midfield. That's another first down against this Army defense, which last week, Ross, was so good on first down with the exception of one drive. But they need to get going here in this early part of this ball game. Well, they're especially good up front, but today it's going to be the guys on the back end. You see how Western Kentucky is spreading them out. Cedric Cunningham, the senior captain and safety, he's going to have to make a bunch of open field tackles because that's what the Hilltoppers will do. They will get the ball in space to their receivers. And off again to Whittington. He got an open hole, but then it was stacked up. Nolan Cockrell finished him off from behind. Spencer Jones there as well. You know, last week, Army did not give up a single play of 20 yards or more. Just 177 total allowed to Georgia State, who an offense that many thought would be able to do something. That challenge today, a much different test against Western Kentucky. Well, an Army's going to be in trouble if Western Kentucky can get five yards when they do choose to run on first down. That's Whittington in the backfield with Zappi, who's set to pass. Looking for the deep shot, checks it down. Corley in space. Another Western Kentucky first down. Wrestled out of bounds by Malcolm Morrison from the Apache position. But they are quickly moving down the field, down to the 36 after a nine-yard pickup. You know what's crazy watching Western Kentucky? They just make it look so easy. You know, a lot of the stuff is underneath throws, but so often, the guy's able to catch the ball with space. They do as good of a job of stretching a defense horizontally as I've seen. Well, they brought the tight end in, plus the 
transfer from North Dakota State, Adam Cofield, who got the start at running back last week. Spencer Jones brought him down. No gain there. Cofield's helmet came off, so he'll have to go to the sideline for a play. 28 transfers on this Western Kentucky team. Watch Jones here. He's going to see the puller and hit it. They're going to pull the right guard, Bo Wilson. Jones sees it. I got to go. I got to go right now. Because if they're pulling a lineman from the other side, trust me, somebody's coming to block you. The sooner you get downhill, the better. Zappi looking downfield, pressure came. That was there all last week. Throws, and it's intercepted. Army with a takeaway. It's Markel Broughton, one of the four captains, back into Western Kentucky territory with the first big play of the day. Well, Zappi threw an interception on the opening drive last week for Western Kentucky, and he throws another one here today. This guy is a ball hawk. You'll see it from the left side of your screen. Watch number 20 come in. He reads it. Now he's right side of the screen. Watch him come in, reading Zappi's eye. Nope, I am jumping that route to Daywood Davis. That is what Markel Broughton does. That's why he's a captain as a junior. This is the second year in a row he has made so many plays on the football. Christian Anderson comes out for Army last week. Tyler Tyler got the start, left the game after the second drive with an injury and will not play today. Anderson goes right back up the middle for a gain of one. This is what happened last year to this Army team, having to shuffle through quarterbacks, dealing with injuries, and it's happening in game two again, but a much more decisive player for Christian Anderson. Well, they are very used to this. They've got five or six guys that have gotten a lot of playing time, so even with no Tyler today, they feel very comfortable with Anderson. Had 55 yards rushing in a touchdown last week. Had 40 yards passing in a touchdown last week. Army had two passing touchdowns in the win against Georgia State as well. Jacoby Buchanan, the B-back behind Anderson on second and eight. The handoff to the fullback, burst through the middle. He never loses yards. This time he picks up six and will set up third and one coming up for Army and an offense uh, that this week with the offensive line that was featured in Connor Bishop, who was Offensive Player of the Week for Jeff Munkin. Yeah, I mean, if you're going to let me pick who I get to spotlight, I'm spotlighting the offensive lineman from Eastern Pennsylvania. Connor Bishop, 16 knockdowns last week, and they do so much with the fullback on either side of him. They need the center to arguably be their best lineman and control that nose tackle. And in case people don't know, Ross Tucker, Offensive Lineman, Eastern <laughs> Pennsylvania. <laughs> And by the way, this is four down territory. They probably won't need it, but I can tell you that right now. It's Kate Barnard behind Anderson, who's back to pass early in the ball game. He's got an open receiver and a first down. Brandon Walters jitters his way down to the 21 yard line. Pick up of 17. Brathwaite made the tackle, but Army in business. Absolutely love this. Watch Walters. He's going to come in the slot and go across the screen there. As Army goes to the hurry up, they slipped Walters behind everybody. Loved the play action pass on third and short. They knew they'd get it on fourth if they had to. Back traditional. Back up the middle. Barnard takes it inside the 15 on a pickup of seven yards. So Western Kentucky's defense, which was tested last week, already through the air. D'Angelo Malone, though, is a star that they have as Army does go fast. And again, it is back on the ground with Barnard. Inching closer to that first down marker, which is at the 11-yard line, is coming up a third and two. You mentioned D'Angelo Malone. He leads all of FBS in sacks. He's got 25 of them, second in school history in sacks, and fifth in tackles for loss. They're going to need him to be stout against the run, however, today. Army going with an unbalanced line to the right. That means they've got three linemen to the right of the center. Also have Cole Catterbone over there as a receiver. Standing this Buchanan barreling his way through the line. He does pick up enough for the first down. And again, all of this coming off the interception of Bailey Zappi, where Army was set up inside Western Kentucky territory. Watch Buchanan. It's just a fullback dive. Even when he gets hit in the backfield, he has such good feet and the ability to stay on his feet and then fall forward. That is now... 112 straight carries without a negative yardage run for Buchanan. 
All of last season, all of last week. Anderson the handoff, it's on the ground. Atkins right through the middle, and the turnover right back to Western Kentucky. Well, something that did not happen last week plagues them early. Jeremy Darvin wrapped it up, and Western Kentucky gets it right back. Atkins just got the ball punched out. The ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by the defense. So Tyson Helton's defense dodges one in the early going. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by The Exchange, welcoming home veterans to their exchange shopping benefits. By USAA Insurance, Auto Renters and Home Insurance. By Cooper Tire, go with the Coopers. And by Serve Pro, proud supporters of our nation's first responders. You hear about all the pageantry and tradition of games at Mikey Stadium, but until you see it for the first time up close and personal, it really doesn't hit home quite like it does today. The parachuters coming in. Bailey Zappi's interception doesn't cost him because Army, a few plays later, gives it back on a fumble. After the defense, Ross for Army, back-to-back -back weeks having takeaways on the opponent's opening drive. Zappi back to the air. They get it out to the edge. Enough space for Jared Stearns. Take it up to the 19. And they say he just got past the 20, so they will give him a first down. I don't know why more teams at every level don't just do that. I mean, it's like a free five to eight yards. Andre Carter trying to get off the edge, but it's a wide open play for Stearns. Was streaking past Jabari Moore. If he doesn't fall down, he might take it to the house. He's at the bottom of the screen. They've got twins up there, and it looked like Moore wanted to try to jam him and missed. He tried to change it up and just jam him at the line of scrimmage, and Stearns went right by him. This time it's Sappy to the tight end, Joey Belgian, who's getting the start today because Josh Simon, their all-conference tight end, is out for the year with a knee injury, explosive tight end that they're trying to replace. But they feel like they have the weapons to do that as Western Kentucky continues to go fast, but a false start that's going to stop this play. Man, that's poor. Ball start. Offense, number five. Five-yard penalty, first down. That is the wide receiver, Mitchell Tinsley. So you've got Army on, on their ropes, right? You're moving the ball. I get why you want to go to the hurry up, but it totally crushes your momentum if you get a motion or a false start penalty like that. You lose five yards, then you actually let the defense substitute if they want or get a breather. Whittington trying to get through some space, maybe a couple. Nolan Cockrell chasing him down from behind, the nose guard that is so good for this Army defense. Couple well, of he's, he's my favorite player. Just watch him chase this down, okay? I think he's one of the best nose tackles in America. He goes around the guard and then still has the athleticism to make that play. To be honest with you, I don't even blame the right guard for that. The running back has to get up in there. If the nose tackle goes backside, back towards it around the right guard, running back's got to go. Whittington is a freshman. He's replaced by Adam Cofield, who's in his sixth year of college football. Gets the handoff and meets the same result. This time it's the linebacker, Eric Smith, combining with Spencer Jones. And they're happy to have Spencer Jones back, Russ. He's been nursing an injury all through camp, played sparingly last week, mixing in with Brian Burton. But he and Smith are formidable duo in the middle. Well, think about it. I mean, every guy that's played that spot the last few years is on an NFL practice squad right now. Cole Christensen, John Radigan, Eric Smith, the next man up. Spencer Jones starting as a sophomore. That bodes extremely well for his future. This is third and 14. They need the Army 29 for a first down. Black Knights come with a blitz. Zappi gets it out quick, and he's brought down. Great defensive play by Cedric Cunningham. You highlighted him in the open, Malachi Corley on the ground, but it's well short of a first down. So decision time here for Western Kentucky. I think they feel like they're kind of in no man's land. I don't know if they want to punt it from the 38-yard line. Good situation typically here for a hard count. See if you can get the Black Knights to jump and then take a shot. Zappi last week did draw three offsides on Tennessee Martin with that hard count. And he just drew away. He did get him. That was Jalen Jacobs trying to come off the edge. Exactly what you just said. 
Well, and that's the problem sometimes with playing inexperienced guys because you can tell Munkin and the defensive coaching staff has alerted guys to that. They're going to try to get you to jump, especially in that situation, fourth and nine. That is football intelligence. Offside. Defense, number 48, unabated to the quarterback. Fourth down. Take a look all the way out there, left side of your screen, next to Andre Carter, the youngster. Jacobs, they're high on him. And you know, when you're young and you get out there, Jay, you kind of forget about some of the things you heard during the week. Now they can open up all their intermediate and short passing game here. Oh, cut the distance in half and more movement. Andre Carter was looking to get the jump, but was it Mason Brooks that moved Ball first? Start. Yep. Offense, number 77, five-yard penalty, fourth down. All right, so we're getting a game here. If you take one, you give it back. Army gets a takeaway. Western Kentucky gets a takeaway. You get a penalty, I get a penalty. Yeah, I was just going to say, I feel like Paul Abdul here. <laughs> two steps forward, two steps back. I thought you said you didn't know music. I, for some reason, I remember Paul Abdul in the 80s. I take <laughs> two steps forward, I take two steps back. All right. Let's come together. Here they go. They need nine yards. Zappi back to the air. To the outside. It's broken up. Davis, the intended receiver, but Jabari Moore with that quick step to get in front. Forces a turnover on downs. Jabari Moore, remember, Jason, he got beat earlier in the series on a long drive. He makes up for it right there on fourth down. Punches that ball out with his right hand. Playing in Mikey Stadium on 9-11, the magnitude of that experience is huge. The emotions are going to be very high as uh, we mourn those losses and terrorist attacks in New York City. We're going to try to represent as uh, best as we can and show the American people that the Army team is willing to uh, lead and willing to serve by playing our hearts out. Cedric Cunningham, the senior, one of the captains from South Carolina, on this day where we all remember what happened 20 years ago, just about 50 miles south of here. And a team in Army that really represents that mission to serve week in, week out, but even more so on a day like today as Anderson keeps it himself and gets about five yards. We get on Sarah Santino Cervasio. Yonkers Fire Department Lieutenant and 9-11 First Responder Steve Trezano led the Army football team out here on the field today. He also brought along two of his fellow firefighters from his firehouse. And I just met firefighter uh, Trezano, and I asked him what the emotions were in the locker room. He addressed the team. He said, I was like a little kid. I felt it was such an honor to be in front of Jeff Munkin and these wonderful players. He said, but I just went to work that day. So many of my comrades never came home. He said, it's just an honor to be here. So many of those stories that we have heard throughout the years. Jamel Jones came in at quarterback for that play and that handoff to Buchanan. Anderson's helmet came off. And if you're just joining us, Ross Tyre Tyler, who got the start last week at quarterback for Army, and they knew that Christian Anderson was going to play. They planned for him to go in in the third series, but Tyler was hurt, not playing today, so Jones is going in. And, and, and they said it's Christian Anderson's game to start, and we'll see where they go. Right, and Tyler's really the best of the bunch with the ball in his hand. I think Anderson might be the best passer of the group. He's already completed one. This is third and one. Handoff up the middle. The push is there. And they pick up a couple of yards. Talking with Jeff Munkin this week, Jaden Hunter made the tackle. Talking with Jeff Munkin this week about Army, he said, you know, 43-10, everybody's praising this team. But what did he say to us? He said, we need to finish our blocks longer, hold them longer. What are you seeing in the first quarter? Well, they did a great job last week of coming off the ball fast and hard and knocking Georgia State back. They just didn't sustain as much as they would like to. So you want to come off low and hard and knock them back, but then try to keep your feet if you can and stay on the block. That's how you get the big plays. Anderson keeps it himself, squeaks through. And he is close. To another first down, knocked off just short of the Western Kentucky 40-yard line. Armed Forces football is proudly supported by Cooper Tires. They did give Anderson the first down on the 10-yard pickup. Now the officials have stopped this. The far down in distance is listed as second down. The officials on the field marked it as first down. They have now moved the sticks back, so it is officially second 
And about a yard here for Christian Anderson. Would be another good time to take a shot if you want to. And it's the pitch to get it to the outside. It is Walters on the carry, and he does pick up enough for the first down. Brandon Walters, Brandon Walter. the senior from Bolingbrook, Illinois, moves Army inside the 35. There's an injured Black Knight right on the sideline there. Can't quite make the number. We will check on the injured player here at West Point when we come back. That is senior wide receiver Sean Eckert, whose left leg was rolled up under on the previous play, is now in the tent. Jason Horowitz, Ross Tucker, Tina Servacio uh, on that first down run, Ross. Show us what happened. Left side of the screen, 87, finishing his block like they're taught to do. Watch him just keep finishing, gets the pancake, and it looked like when he pancaked the Hilltopper, his left foot, watch his left leg underneath his own body, right there, just gets caught up a little bit. Usually what happens, Jason, is somebody else runs into you from behind or from the side. That was actually just going underneath his own body. Eckert last week in the win against Georgia State had his first career reception. It went for 26 yards. One of the three completions that Army had last week. As Walters in motion, and Anderson decides to keep it. Just head down right into Halasi, who made the tackle. So one of my favorite Army Black Knights, Brandon Walters. Watch him come in motion and then actually lead Anderson Doodle. I'm going back. Watch this. What a cool, creative way to get an extra lead blocker there. That guy's 180 pounds. I am convinced he is the best pound-for-pound -pound blocker in college football. Well, he just pushed back 275 I, pounds. I mean, Sixth-year Western Kentucky player Juwan Jones. I watched him last week. It's crazy. Inside to Tyrell Robinson. Jaden Hunter all over the field on for the defense for Western Kentucky, the 6'2 junior in the transfer from Georgia. And it'll set up a third and short for Army. So should be noted that even though they are absolutely within field goal range for Cole Talley, if they get fourth and two or less, they almost always go for it. This is exactly the schedule they want to be on. They look at it as two downs to get three yards, and they almost always get it. And they go to Buchanan, too, because he never loses yards. Anderson just made a check. Two handed off to Buchanan. He is pushed back close to the line. Great defensive play. Will Ignan stood up the be back, the 260 pounder, forcing that fourth down. So that here is that decision. Yeah, well, they're going to go. I mean, that's what the book says. They go based on the analytics. They should go this portion of the field. But Ignat, I mean, Buchanan is 260 pounds, and he had a five yard head of steam there. I know Ignat got some help, but that was very impressive. And it looks like they do have to get a playoff here at the end of the quarter. They cannot take it to the quarter. About a three second differential between the play clock. Give it to Buchanan again. He pushes forward, and he does have an Army first down. What a luxury it is to have a player who does not go down in the backfield. Even an offense like this, Russ, that is structured not to lose yards, you have players who lose yards. Not the case with Jacoby Buchanan. That first down run will take us to break. Scoreless here in West Point. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Welcome back to Mikey Stadium at West Point, where it is scoreless between Army and Western Kentucky. And here at the U.S. Military Academy, it is also homecoming. And I am so honored to be joined by two very special guests, Colonel Andrew Morgan, NASA astronaut, West Point class of 1998, and Lieutenant General Daniel Carbler, commander of the United States Army Space and Missile Defense Command, West Point class of 1987. Gentlemen, the two of you have done so much in your military career since graduating from here. But what is most nice? What do you like the most about coming back to West Point for homecoming? 
Tina, I'll tell you, it's just a great honor to be able to be back here. Among the Corps cadets, 4,000 of our brightest, our youngest, our future leaders of character. I've got a daughter who's a 2020 graduate and a son who's currently the class of 2024. They and all these uh, cadets who, have, who are serving now since 9-11, some of them not even born uh, when 9-11 happened, to know that they are willing to serve our country it just does me really, really proud. And we're just going to move along here. And send it back to Jason for a touchdown. For a touchdown as well. It looked like he was flying into outer space <laughs> like the astronauts. Tyrell Robinson with the explosive play, and Army takes the lead. Oh, man, you beat me to it. I was going to say this play was out of this world. Watch the lead block he's going to get from Brahim Murphy. Watch number eight. Tyrell Robinson sets him up inside, inside, outside him. I love that. Made the defender think he was going to, now he goes airborne at the five yard line. I mean, he went airborne at the five. Well, they talk about his explosive ability. That put it all on display. Cole Talley on for the extra point. It is up and through. And on the first play of the second quarter, Army takes a seven nothing lead. Astronauts in attendance. We all are in awe of people flying in outer space. Tomorrow, the NFL on CBS regular season kicks off. Big time doubleheader early. It's the Steelers and the Bills, the Jets, and Zach Wilson. Gary take on their former quarterback at Sam Darnold, followed by a matchup between two of the game's best young signal callers, Bakers, Browns, Mahomes, and the Chiefs. It all gets started with the NFL today at noon Eastern on CBS. 10 plays, 62 yards after the turnover on downs, capped off by the 24-yard touchdown run for Tyrell Robinson, who had a touchdown catch last week. The man playing last year as a freshman, the future for him here at West Point is out of this world. Well, I, I believe he's the most explosive offensive skill guy they've had since I've been doing Army games. I did one or two back in 2018. Yeah, and you can see it there. That's why they want to try to get him the ball on the perimeter. Did such a good job setting up Murphy's block, and then to take off from the four or five like that and score, that was incredible. Tally set to kick it away again early in the second quarter with a 7-0 lead. Fair catch called for, and they'll bring it back out to the 25-yard line. Let's go back downstairs to Tina Servasio. Yes, let's continue the conversation. Lieutenant General Carvler, what did you want to say about the touchdown you guys got to see right here on the sideline? Well, Tina, it's great. It just shows that the Army operates the best on the ground, getting in the end zone, and we operate well in space, which is why it's great to have Colonel Drew Morgan with us. Colonel Morgan, you've done spacewalks as long as 45 hours. You were on the International Space Station for nine months. What was your biggest challenge, though, in your different space expeditions that you've experienced? Well, my, I, you know, there were a lot of challenges, but my message to the cadets all along while I, during my visit this past week is that they are going to be leaders of character for our Army, and they're going to lead on land, air, sea, space, cyberspace, and outer space. And I'm just so proud of them and all of them and their decision to become leaders for our Army. And, uh, and you know, there are, so, there are limitless opportunities for them in the Army, and my career just represents one of many of those. Well, thank you to the both of you for your service and for your time today. We appreciate you. Thanks, Tina. Jason? Tina, and this is Branch Week as well, where they bring in all the different 21 aspects of the military here to West Point to learn their future careers. Bailey Zappi's seven of nine, but now starting to feel the pressure. Quickly gets it out. Jarrett Stearns on the grab, and he just has nowhere to go. Wrestled out of bounds. Brought in the first out there, along with Cameron Jones, and it'll bring up third and long. Army did a much better job defending that quick look pass, we used to call it. Usually you throw that when it's off coverage, you have a blocker, and you can get five or six yards. They were only able to get two. Third possession for the Hilltoppers. The first was an interception. The second, they moved it down the field, then a turnover on downs. This is third and eight, and a timeout taken by Army. First Jeff Monken wants to think Army. about this third down, and we'll step away. Back inside Mikey Stadium, and Armed Forces football is proudly supported by the exchange. 
Along with Ross Tucker and Tina Servasio, Jason Horowitz, proud to have you with us here inside Mikey Stadium. Army off a 43-10 win last week against Georgia State. They have given up yards today to Western Kentucky, but start to change a little bit. Army is showing pressure here. The question will be whether they bring it or drop out of it. They do bring five. Zappi over the middle. It's incomplete. Corley, the intended receiver, he felt the pressure around his ankles, tried to get it out quick, and it's fourth down. That's just a bad throw by Zappi. You don't see it very often. He's so accurate. I think he knew pressure was coming, but they did a good job picking it up. He's just throwing the slant. He knew it right away. That's a throw he has to make. He knows he's got to make it. So John Haggerty on to kick it away to the explosive Tyrell Robinson. And it puts the Hilltopper defense right back on the field. They get a piece of it. Right up the middle, Army deflects it. Now it's going to bounce for the Hilltoppers. And it won't be as bad as it seems as it goes inside the 50. But Fabrice Voin got his hand up the middle and forced a 27-yard punt. Army takes over. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Navy Federal Credit Union. Our members are the mission by Ram Trucks. Motor Trends Truck of the Year for the third year in a row. And by Today's Military. Let's take another look at that block punt, and you're going to see this stack right here. The guy in front goes to the right, Fabrice Boyne, right up the middle. Love the design there by Sean Saturnio, the special teams coordinator. Beautiful design to have Jimmy Charlo go to the outside and Fabrice Boyne come back inside. And they come right back with a pass. That is Cole Catterbone. The junior from Plantation, Florida. Now, they said his knee was down at the 44. He was taken to the turf closer to the 40, which would have been a first down. So they put him back down at the 46-yard line. So it is a pickup of seven. Catterbone on the field. Remember, Sean Eckert on the last series was taken off. Tina telling us he was taken back to the locker room on crutches, and his shoe is off as well. So we can find out some more information on Sean Eckert later. The wide receiver for Army, but it is second and three with a 7-0 lead and 12.45 to go in the second quarter. Anderson's going to keep it himself. He puts his head down, and he's got another Army first down. Well, they're moving the ball very effectively. You know, they've got a little bit of the passing game going. Sometimes when they get a first down, they're going right back on the football here. As you see, a nice lead block there from Buchanan. But when Army feels like they've got the defense on their heels, maybe they're a little tired after the three and out. They like to attack. Back on the ground, Robinson. Remember, two years ago, Army played Western Kentucky. The Hilltoppers won that game 17-8. And we talked to the coaching staff about that this week. They said they expected a similar defensive effort from Western Kentucky. Ross, the Hilltoppers only gave up 200 yards in that game, in that 17-8 Western Kentucky win. Well, what did Jeff Munkin say to us yesterday? It, it was the best performance any defense has had against his offense in years. I mean, you got to go back to 2014-2015 for a defense to have stopped the Black Knights like the Hilltoppers did two years ago. It is Howard in motion. Anderson fakes it, looking downfield. He's got two to choose from. Wide open, Brahim Murphy for the second straight week on a receiving touchdown. Christian Anderson had two open receivers that could have scored. 40 yards on the pass play and a 13-0 lead. Well, and this is what they do to you. Stay there on Murphy. But they keep running it, running it. The safeties get nosy. Both safeties step up. Nope, it's a bootleg. We're behind you. Anderson could pick who he threw it to. He chose Murphy. And the Army passing game is playing so much better this year than they have in recent years. What a weapon the way Anderson's throwing the ball right now. Low snap. It was put down. And Tally put it through. Three of four passing last week for the Army quarterbacks. They are a perfect three for three today. And a two touchdown lead here on this Saturday afternoon.
Two Army touchdowns in a span of three minutes, 21 seconds. And for the second straight week, Christian Anderson has hit a 40-yarder for a score. Watch both safeties. They both get fooled either way, and it lets both these guys be wide open. The tight end and the wing to that side, they've got two deep safeties. They both step up. And when you're running the ball well on a triple option offense, the passing game, in particular the play action passing game, can be absolutely deadly, and it was right there. And think about the opportunities that Army's defense and special teams has given the offense today. The interception where Army moved it into the red zone, but then fumbled at the 10, forced on a fourth down, a turnover on downs, which they capitalized, and that was following a blocked punt. Alley boots it short, another fair catch called for. Bishop at the 10, so they will start at the 25. Well, Army's greatest legends brought to you by Exchange. Former Army quarterback Chad Jenkins, the man behind center, the 2001 win against Navy after the gridiron. Chad served with the 75th Ranger Regiment as a platoon leader and ground force commander, awarded three Bronze Star medals, now living in his hometown of Dublin, Ohio, with his family, his wife Emily, his daughter Aubrey, and his son, Bryce, legend certainly, Chad Jenkins. Well, I got a chance to speak to him this week and remembering what it was like to be here at West Point 20 years ago on 9-11. He said all cadets knew that what they had signed up for and that what their commitment was gonna be in the future was about to change. And that certainly did 20 years later. What a beautiful family. And I I'm in awe of these guys, I really am. I mean, anytime I see something like Three bronze stars, four deployments, just absolutely in awe of everyone that makes that decision. And I know a lot of people that have served and are serving are watching right now. Cannot tell you how much my family and I appreciate all of you. Thank you. I snap Zappy. Now there you go, flea flicker, but Eric Smith has wants nothing to do with it. He read that the whole way. Cofield was blown up by the linebacker and Zappi had to eat it, it's third and seven. Well, watch Eric Smith. When he blitzes, good things happen. They call him Bam Bam, and he didn't realize it was a flea flicker until it was too late, but he was like, I'm going anyway, and Zappi did not have time. Smith read it when he had to. I love what Nate Woody said yesterday about Eric Smith. He said, he's gonna dent something. I've never heard a football coach say that before. He's gonna dent something. He dented Cofield right there. Well, this feels like a must for the Hilltoppers. 0 of 2 on third down. They had a three and out on their last possession, and they cannot put the defense right back on the field. Zappi settles in the pocket, wide open! It is Sturge racing past the secondary, and he races for a touchdown! 73 yards, and just like that, it's the answer. Well, that is terrific play design by Zach Kitley. Watch Stearns in the slot. He's gonna run right down the field. I have no idea what coverage Army was in right there, but they cannot possibly expect Eric Smith to cover a slot receiver deep down the field like that. Somebody made a mental error or it was a poor call by the coaches. They did Narvison on for the extra point. And when all the momentum felt like it was going the Black Knights after the great defensive plays, just like that, the Houston Baptist transfers connect. Absolutely gigantic play for the Hilltoppers. They had to get that to get back in this game, and that's exactly what they just did. It's a great honor to be able to play in that game, to represent Western Kentucky against a great opponent in Army. To me, it's almost kind of like a national holiday, you know. Um, I think there'll be a lot of people watching that will feel the same way as well. So to take part in a game like that will be uh, a really tremendous thing. Something I'll never forget for sure. Western Kentucky head coach Tyson Elton in his third season. And, you know, we talked to Tyson this week uh, about the opportunity to come up here and be at this special place on this day where everyone remembers what happened 20 years ago and never forgets the lost lives, thousands of lost lives. And he said he knows that everyone on these days is rooting 
against the team that plays against Army. He knows that. But he, but to his point, the special opportunity yes. for Western Kentucky to be in this game. Well, and then obviously on CBS after this, we've got Air Force and Navy. It, it's a special day all the way around. I think Western Kentucky is honored to be a part of it. Fair catch called for by Tyrell Robinson. What happened in the coverage on that 73-yard touchdown pass? Well, listen, it's a two-deep zone, okay? We know Campbell and Broughton are deep. The only other possibility is it's Tampa 2, and Eric Smith has to get deep middle. I doubt that that's what the, the call was. If it is, then Eric Smith was way late to open his hips and get depth. But even if it is Tampa 2 and they want Eric Smith to get deep middle, that is a tough ask. Two deep zone traditionally, Jay. Both safeties are deep. Tampa 2, it's the middle linebacker's job to get the deep middle and essentially make it a three deep zone. Well, with that pass, Western Kentucky has surpassed the offensive output that Georgia State had last week. Buchanan for a couple of yards. D'Angelo Malone, first time calling his name today. And you were talking about D'Angelo Malone coming into this ball game with his 25 career sacks and more than 43 tackles for loss. They said he only knows one speed. He is all pedal to the metal. It's one of the reasons why he's been such a good player. He's on every list. I, I mean, Benaric, Nagurski, Senior Bowl. If there's a list for an elite defensive player in college football, Malone's on it. You wonder if that touchdown pass now settles in this defense who was on its heels. Anderson with the pitch. That is Walters out in space. Has a first down, and Walters takes it out to the 40-yard line. Demetrius Kane, the sixth year from Princeton, Kentucky tracked him down. Watch this, watch the fullback and watch the split back. Watch these lead blocks. Actually, it's gonna be both wing, yeah. Here comes Barner down. Here comes Robinson down. I love that, going right through the outside thigh pad. Two cut blocks. That is beautiful option football. Ross Anthony Atkins is back as the B-back behind Anderson. Remember, he had the fumble in the red zone, gets it again. And this time he takes it out five yards. Malone there again. Demetrius Kane as well. You know, one of the tough things about fumbling like Atkins did earlier, a lot of times it kind of gets in your head then, right? Like you don't want to fumble again. You know you can't fumble again. And I think the coaches get nervous that he's not going to run as hard, not going to run as well. This is a guy that is 245 pounds and ran 22 miles an hour last week against Georgia State, according to the GPS trackers. Inside to Robinson, who switches speeds. He is so shifty. Inside the 45-yard line, he picks up 14 more before Bishop brought him to the turf, and he probably should have been taken down 10 yards earlier. This guy could play anywhere. Watch him put his right foot in the ground. Ah, nope, I'm going back the other way. Watch this move right here on Brathway. Oh, see ya, I'm going back this way. I mean, he is a special, special player. He could be a skill guy for pretty much any school in this country. Look at him stiff arming as he's falling down. He's on the sideline for this play in the inside of Buchanan. A couple more yards, really. NFL is officially back, and there is no better way to kick off that first football Sunday than with Tops. Join our crew for a full four hours of previews and predictions. It's that other pregame show tomorrow morning at 8 on CBS Sports Network. I know you will be locked in and glued across the coast. Some unbelievable week one matchups. Well, By the way, we started Thursday night. And how about the ones on CBS? I mean, Bills, Steelers at 1, Browns, Chiefs is the game of the day. CBS is where it's at. Holmes coming back from the injury. Anderson pitches it to the outside again. And a wonderful tackle. Antoine Kincaid making his 28th career start. Came up from the safety spot to cut him down. Well, we just talked about the good open field blocks last time. You'll see left side of your screen eventually. Kincaid will come in, number one. They don't get him blocked. They don't get number one blocked right there. He cuts inside of Murphy, and that's a terrific play by Kincaid that gets Army off schedule. So third and seven on the 38-yard line. Now, Jeff Munkin did say in a beautiful day, they'd let Tally go from 50. Is this four-down territory? Well, it is if they get within fourth and three, I'd say they'd strongly consider it. Anderson back to pass. He stays perfect. Nope. Donaldson dropped it. 
He hit Reekin Donaldson right between the numbers, right at the sticks, but he dropped it in the first incompletion of the day. Terrific job by Khalif Halasi. One of the corners comes up and hits it. Donaldson's got to make that catch. I mean, it was in his hands. You know you're going to get hit. That's an easy pitch and catch for a first down. If they don't get the first down here, that's almost a turnover worthy play by Donaldson. Well, they're going to keep the offense on the field. They're on fourth and seven. It's always interesting when they go under center here, Jason, because you know they're not going to run it on fourth and seven. Now he is back to pass. He does have an open receiver. Catterbone does have the first down. He ducked his way between a pair of defenders. Brathwaite made the stop, but not before a fourth down conversion. Anderson is dialed in this year, man. I mean, Anderson, every throw has been on point. Western Kentucky knew they were going to throw it this time, and he still put it right on Catterbone, who put it away and got forward for the first down. You know, Jason, if, if Army can just convert three to five third downs a game throwing the ball, they are going to be tough to beat. I mean anybody. He is four of five passing for 72 yards and a touchdown. Well, and, and you've covered Army football now. This is your fourth year here on, on CBS Sports Network calling all the games here at, at Mikey Stadium. We were talking about the warm-ups before the game, how they were throwing the ball more in warm-ups today than, than normal. And it's paying off. You know, and they, they don't mind doing it. I mean, I know that they're going to lean on the fullback. That's what they really like to do, but it puts them in such a good position when they're clicking in the passing game. They've had a lot of struggles with that over the last couple years. This is the 10th play of this drive. Following the touchdown pass for Bailey Zappi, it's the dive up the middle, and they pick up three more. So third and about one and a half, Demetrius Kane on the stop. Christian Anderson, again, he did not start last week. Tell your Tyler got the start for Jeff Munkin, who said all throughout camp this summer that he felt like he had six different quarterbacks who could lead this team down the field. And he played four of them last week. Tyler, Anderson, Jamel Jones, and Jabari Laws, who they were so excited to have on the field last week after two knee injuries over the last two seasons. This is usually Buchanan time. It is Buchanan time, right up the middle. Darius Schiff jumped on his back, but not before he picked up three and a first down. Do you think the offensive linemen, when they get up to the line of scrimmage on third and fourth and short, do you think they say, we're giving it to 33? I mean, everybody knows it's wedge blocking up front. Everybody knows what's happening. But with that wedge blocking, meaning everyone is putting their helmet on the outside hip of the interior lineman, there's always enough of a soft spot that Buchanan's able to get up in there. Tell your Tyler watching from the sidelines. Led two scoring drives to open before leaving the game with an injury. Not going to play today. This time it was Robinson back with Anderson out of the shotgun. And he picks up four more inside the Western Kentucky 15. Well, if there was any concern about Army moving the football today, that has been put to rest here in the first half. Right, and I think they're kind of trying to serve two masters, so to speak, right here. Jason with they want to score a touchdown clearly, but I think they want to run enough time off the clock to not give Western Kentucky a whole lot of time when they get the ball back. I would think they would wait until under 10 seconds, maybe even under five to snap as they do a late unbalanced here. That time they did snap it with 12. It is Atkins lowers the shoulder into four Hilltoppers. He's about a yard shy of the first down. So to your point, they can take another 35 seconds off the clock. Yeah, I think they're glad they didn't get the first down there. I know people are watching this being like, what do you mean they're glad they didn't get the first down? Well, they're extremely confident that they will eventually get the first down. But this gives them another down of the clock running. And let's keep an eye on it because they should snap it with about five or less. And then we'll see how much time Western Kentucky gets after this and whether or not it's a fact. Well, and Tyson Hilt does have all three of his timeouts knowing that he might want the ball. Here they go. Now they're really milking it. And remember, well done. Army gets the ball to start the second half as well. And hand off to Atkins again. He picks his way through the middle. Again, it is Darius Ship on the stop. He did pick up the first down. So first and goal coming up from the Hilltopper five-yard line as we tick inside of three minutes. Yeah, so this is fantastic if you are Jeff Munkin in the Black Knights because it's looking highly likely that you'll get another score, whether it's a touchdown or a field goal, to go up two scores and not leave a whole lot of time 
for Western Kentucky on the other side of it. And then, as you said, they get the ball back to start the second half. 13 plays, 65 yards on this drive for Army. That is the Picasso for Jeff Munkin of drives. Anderson, the handoff, Howard trying to sneak past the goal line. And they mark him short. That's even better. I'm telling you, they're not upset that he's being marked short right now. I promise you, they are not worried about getting the touchdown here on third and fourth and goal from about half a yard away. Right, and, and here comes Tyson Helton taking that timeout. So exactly what we were just talking about. He knows he's got an offense that can score lightning First quick. First timeout, Western Kentucky. And he also timeout. knows the fact that, hey, Army's on the doorstep here. They might score anyway. We want to have as much time as possible. That's a good timeout there by Tyson Helton. Really good timeout. They pull the left guard, gets up in the hole. Howard got awfully close. Everybody driving. He might have gotten in there. He was close. Nice job by Noah Knapp, number 65, the left guard. Used to play center. They moved the left guard. He's playing a lot faster, not having to worry about snapping the football. I can I can speak to that. It's a lot easier when you don't have to worry about delivering that football first. Now, this is a weird thing to ask, but it, you wonder if Tyson Helton wants them to review that, to wonder if he if they got in. Because if he did, he'd get his timeout back. Yeah, that's interesting. I mean, I think they'd still want to try to get some penetration here and try to prevent the touchdown. But you're right, you do get that feeling of inevitability, especially when 33 is going to get it. On an eight and a half minute drive, it is Buchanan over the top, and it's an Army touchdown. Fire the cannons, the Black Knights back up by two scores. Oh, no, 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 we don't fire the cannons. We fire the Buchanans when Jacoby scores a touchdown. Ooh, I like the close grip push up there. This is Army football. Look how low they are. Look how low everybody is. Just a mass of humanity. And then here comes the big boy, listed at 260, hopping over the top. Second touchdown of the season. Tally with the extra point. It is 21-7 with 2.07 left before halftime. Jacoby Buchanan, last year's second leading rusher, rumbles into the end zone for a 21-7 lead. Coming up on the halftime report, powered by Ram Trucks, Adam Zucker, Rick Neuheisel, Brian Jones, standing by from Navy Marine Corps Memorial Stadium in Annapolis. They'll get you ready for the big Air Force Navy game that starts the Commander in Chiefs Trophy Series. Love to and all the highlights and news around the country, including the big one today in Columbus between Oregon and Ohio State. It's all coming up on the halftime report, powered by Ram Trucks. Jacoby Buchanan just capped off a 16-play, 75-yard drive that took eight and a half minutes off the clock. Three consecutive touchdown drives for the Black Knights. Ross, and now the time of possession is starting to add up. 18 minutes to nine and change. And what really matters now is they cannot let Western Kentucky get anything deep or cheap. They're going to have to make the Hilltoppers earn it. But this is really what Western Kentucky's offense is like normally. Well, and remember, Army's set to get the ball to start the second half. So this is a crucial two minutes for the Hilltoppers. Tally and Bishop, like he has all afternoon, calls for the fair catch, which will bring out the offense to the 25-yard line. This week's AP poll is powered by Ram Trucks. Some of the movement in there, including Iowa into the top 10 after their big win against Indiana last week. They got Iowa State coming up in a couple hours. Yeah, that's going to be an awesome game. Two teams coming off very different week one performances. We'll see if the Cyclones can bounce back. They almost lost to Northern Iowa. A lot of FCS schools pulled off some victories last week. Six. Six, including the game you had Cohen and Tina Servasio yeah. had here on CBS Sports Network between UConn and Holy Cross. Zappi got the pressure, races out of the pocket, had enough time, and again it is Jared Stearns. He takes it out near midfield, pushed out of bounds at the 49-yard line, but a 24-yard pickup. Well, now they got plenty of time with that big play. He's the inside receiver. They're playing zone. He gets behind the second level. Spencer Jones loses him. Zone is not good if you're going to take that long to get there. Here comes Carter, though. Got around for a sack. Three last week, and Andre Carter forces the seven-yard loss. Well, he was second in the country coming into this week with three. There was a guy with three and a half. 
So he is the leading sack artist in college football right now. 130 and counting on second and 17. Both teams have two timeouts remaining here in the half. They bring the blitz. Zappi fires. It's almost picked off. Jabari Moore right before halftime last week had one, and he almost had another. You know, it's funny because yesterday, Army defense coordinator Nate Woody said he might drop a couple in practice, but we don't worry about it because he always makes the play in the game. Well, he didn't there. I, I mean, he made the play on the ball, but he could have had interception and maybe and then some. One of three on third down for Western Kentucky. That last one went for 73. Zappi settles back, rockets and fires, and it's an open receiver. Wide open Craig Burt Jr., the 6'4 junior from Columbus, Ohio. And it's a first down. Man, I don't know how that happens on third and 17. Still plenty of time for the Hilltoppers with two timeouts. He picked up 28. Zappi's got all kinds of time, and it's Burt again, streaking across the middle. And he is down at the 11 as we're about to tick inside of a minute, but it is the junior who originally began at Urbana University picking up another gain of 20. Army's got to bring some pressure. When Zappi has time, they're not able to hold up in coverage. That's a late substitution on the field, which will allow Army. Yeah, it's a poor decision. That enables Army to come out, although they're already inside the 10 with two timeouts. They're fine time-wise. Zappi staring at the end zone. He has all day to throw. Takes off up the middle, pointing his way across the line, heading to the pylon. Touchdown, oh, Bailey Zappi. He had all the time in the world and still found his way out the outside for a 10-yard touchdown run. And that was the exact opposite of what had been happening earlier, where the coverage couldn't hold up because it took so long. Let's watch the right side of your screen. They run a stunt. So if you're 95, Cockrell right there, you got to work your way back to the quarterback. You cannot allow there to be that much room and allow Zappi to have that type of huge hole to scamper in for a touchdown. A third and 17 conversion leads Western Kentucky down the field. And Bailey Zappi, who had seven touchdown passes in his Western Kentucky debut last week, and 424 yards after a rocky start, he's settling into this ball game. Well, listen, they're playing zone, and you would think that somebody like Eric Smith, 53, would have had eyes for Zappi. There's a lot of room there for him to run. Credit Zappi, he's not really known for his legs, but he did run the 400 and was a triple jumper in high school. So he's mobile enough to score like that. And every time you think Army might start to run away with this thing, Western Kentucky comes right back. Well, on his speed, we got the chance to talk with him earlier this week, and he told you he ran track, played basketball, plus a great quarterback. You asked him, what'd you run? He said, well, you've seen me on tape. You know I'm not fast. I didn't <laughs> run the 100. He's fast enough. And at 6'1", he was the center on the basketball team. Bailey Zappi from Victoria, Texas, South Texas. Went to Houston Baptist, was his only offer out of high school. Transferred when his offensive coordinator, Zach Kitley, got the job to Western Kentucky. And they have totally transformed the offense from last year. Kickoff back inside the end zone, so they'll bring it out to the 25-yard line. Well, late tonight at 1.30 Eastern, our, studi our studio is going to go coast to coast. It's the latest headlines, highlights, and hot takes. Don't forget about those hot takes. Don't miss Inside College Football on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Well, our day got going. Adam Zucker, Rick Neuheisel, Brian Jones with the 10.30 start from Annapolis. The half-hour early kick here. Quadruple header today on CBS Sports Network. So what do you do with 29 seconds to go and a pair of timeouts here? Well, you know, normally I think they would just take a knee, but with the way Anderson's been throwing the football, maybe they take a shot. They don't. They hand it off. The teams have timeouts. Neither one's going to use them. And so a game that was scoreless after one is going to go into halftime with a 21-14 Army advantage. Three consecutive scoring drives for Army. Western Kentucky 
answered with a pair of 75-yard, much faster drives, but we got a heck of a second half coming up. Yeah, I think if you're Army, you're feeling good about the fact that they haven't been able to stop you the last three times you had the ball, and if you're Western Kentucky, you feel pretty good that you're in this thing. End of the second quarter, 21-14, Army the lead. After the break, Adam and the gang down in Annapolis. You're watching college football on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Back inside Mikey Stadium, where Army started the game with a big play in the second quarter, was full of them. Black Knights leading the Hilltoppers 21-14. Second half coming up after this. Oh, well, was scoreless after one, 21-14. As we get ready to start the third quarter, your first half stats brought to you by The Exchange. All the rushing yards for Army, all the passing yards for Bailey Zappi and Western Kentucky. And a 21-14 game with Army set to get the ball to start in the third quarter. Jason Orwitz, Ross Tucker, happy to have you back with us here at Mikey Stadium. Tina Servasio down on the field. Ross, the back and forth that happened in the first quarter all resulted with Negative plays, totally different story in the second quarter. Yeah, how about it? 35 points scored, and looking at the stats, Jason, I, I don't want to act like we're experts, but that's pretty much what you expected, right? Now, I don't know if I expected Tyrell Robinson to go to the air from the five-yard line or for Army to throw it as much. I did expect Bailey Zappi to hit guys like Jared Stearns down the middle for some big plays. He went 12 of 17 for 236, but they answered the Buchanan on an eight-and-a-half-minute drive, but this was right before the half. And Russ, they had to have this knowing that Army's getting the ball to start the third quarter. Absolutely, and really that first half went just about the way we thought it would. So Jeff Munkin getting ready for the third quarter as we once again welcome in the troops at Camp Arif John at U.S. Army Central in Kuwait. We thank you for your service, and we are so proud and honored to have you watching us and with us here this afternoon. All the emotions coming into this game, the 20th anniversary of the attacks on the Twin Towers and the Pentagon and in Pennsylvania. All of that mixed together with what has turned out to be a wonderful football game between two what re seems to be really good football teams. Absolutely. What a back and forth first half. I think we're in for a good one here. Robinson lets it go and Army will start at the 25. Down to Tina. I don't know if you got that All right. There we go. Jeff Munkin told me at halftime that he really likes what he's seen from Christian Anderson. He's doing a good job with his reads, with his pitch plays, and handling the ball. But Munkin was furious with that fumble in the first half, and he said they have to stop all this busted coverage. That's how they gave up those touchdowns. Tyson Helton from WK. Uh, from uh, Western Kentucky said that he's really impressed with his offensive line reading the defense and the different looks that Army's giving them however he feels they've got to come out hot and sustain drives here and eliminate penalties if they want to win. Tina thank you the give up the middle to Buchanan for a yard is it sustainable to continue to have two minute drives while Army's putting together six and seven minute drives. Well if you get a stop every once in a while it is and that's a real good start here for Western Kentucky. Anytime you hold Army to two yards or less on first down, that's a win. Army is now behind the chains. Think about it. They get three yards every play. They'll march right down the field. You hold them to two, one, or negative. Now Western Kentucky has a shot on this series of downs. That is Barnard now as the B-back behind Anderson. The pitch goes outside. Brandon Walters had a good first half. Brathwaite, good tackler for Western Kentucky, came up to make the stick a couple of yards shy of the first down. He got a nice block in front of him by Tyrell Robinson again. Army did a nice job getting on the perimeter. Jaden Hunter for Western Kentucky. Ooh, this is the most playing time he's had for a Hilltopper. He had eight first-half tackles, including that forced fumble that Tina was talking about. And barely played last week. You know, he's really in because they've got the five-man front along the defensive line that they had so much success with against Army two years ago. They're going with about 70% of the same stuff they did in that game down at Bowling Green two years ago. Army was five of seven on third down in the opening half. It is Barnard through the middle, and he reaches the 35. That's all he needed. He's got the first down. Wow, that was close. Western Kentucky knew what was coming. They still couldn't stop it. It's just the inside dive. Really a pretty good job by Darvin, number zero. See where his, yeah, I think he got it. I think that's a good call. That was close. They probably would have gone for it anyway, but 
the key down there was the second down where they got Walters on the perimeter and were able to get some serious yardage to get them back on schedule. One of you just joining us, Christian Anderson. Got to start Tyre Tyler out today after starting last week. Anderson has played very well. Picks up eight yards on first down. Halasi making the tackle. But again, those are the plays. He, four or five passing. He's hit big plays down the field. And he's making the right reads. And watch Cade Bernard on this quarterback zone. He does such a good job, Barnard, on the lead. Gets up there on the linebacker, Ignat. That's all Anderson needs. You know, Sandy McCoy was terrific without the football the last couple years for the Black Knights. And I think Barnard is really filling in as that blocking fullback that they want to use a lot. The B-back, they call him here. Tyler, last year's leading rusher who got the first two drives last week. Watch from the sideline. This time they get it to the outside. It is Robinson in space. Not as big as I think they'd like, but enough for a first down. Antoine Kincaid read it coming across, made the stop, but he did pick up the first. And this is bad news for Army right now. The tail end of the play, you'll see Robinson get a nice block from Walters to get the first down, but their starting center, Connor Bishop, his second year in that role, is down holding his knee at the end of the play. So we will step aside as they attend to last week's Offensive Player of the Week. The Army still attending to starting center Connor Bishop, who last year made 10 starts after moving to guard when they need him to. Down on the back end of this play, right around the 45-yard line. Earlier in this ball game, Sean Eckert was rolled up on while finishing a block, and now he is coming out with crutches and the air cast around his left leg. No official word yet on Sean Eckert. Obviously done for the day. Oh, yeah, bringing man. the card out for Bishop. I, I really, you hate to see that. Early in the season, especially such a good young player. Watch him. He's the center, number 57. They're all blocking back. He's back on Darvin. And then you just see a body come in there on the back of his legs. You know, I can speak to that, Jason. I, I tore my right MCL twice. Both times, it was the same type of action. One time, it was a running back ran into the side of my leg. One time, it was a fellow offensive lineman. The well, good news, if there is any, is that Noah Knapp, you would expect him to move to center. He's got some starts at center under his belt the last couple of years for the Black Knights. Yeah, he made two starts there last year. You know, to your point, though, talking with the coaches about the offensive line, wanting them to finish better than they did last week, but they talked about how well Bishop moved the nose and how important Connor Bishop was to this offensive line, which didn't really have continuity last year with all the injuries they had as well. And so you wonder what that effect has, not only for today, but obviously the rest of the season. I've been on that cart before. It's a really, really bad feeling. It's so weird. You go in there, you take your pads off and stuff, you shower up usually, and then you, a lot of times, like we saw Eckert come out, and it's just you're, you're totally removed when you were just in the action moments before. Let's hope it's not serious for Bishop. So it is Knapp that moves to center. Zach Ward to his left now as the left guard. Anderson out of the gun, keeps it himself on a first down play across the 50. Four yard pickup, Kincaid yet another tackle for Western Kentucky. Does it change the offense at all when they shift centers? Well, I don't think so. Um, you know, I think that that's one of the good things. You'll see the 70, the left guard there, Zach Ward. Good job getting on the hip of Knapp and getting the cut on the back side, but they play. Cam Holloway and Zach Ward a bunch anyway. They're both seniors. That's exactly why they play him, in case there's an opportunity like this. Anderson kept it into space. Christian Anderson, the right decision. Kincaid wrestled him to the turf. But another first down on a 16-yard pickup for the quarterback. Boy, I love when the quarterback, watch him follow right where Barnard went. I'm going to follow him right behind. They get a good block by Murphy on the linebacker. And some of these Western Kentucky defenders are looking for the ball. You can't do it. I know that sounds counterintuitive, but you have to stick with your responsibility. They're looking for the ball. They're expecting the fullback. Good sleight of hand there by Anderson. Anderson up to 54 yards rushing. Again, this is the opening drive of the third quarter, and they're nearly five minutes off the clock again. 
time it is Buchanan. And again, nothing in terms of negative plays. A two-yard stop. Jaden Hunter, who we talked about to start this third quarter, yet another tackle. Armed Forces football is proudly sponsored by USAA. It's at 9.50 to go in the third quarter. And remember, Russ, Army scored on its final three possessions of the second quarter, with the exception of the one that they finished out the quarter the last 25 seconds. They're picking up where they left off. Tough snap. Anderson caught it. Robinson again got a block from Walters. Robinson inside the 10. Knocked down at the three. Massive collisions on that play. And there are four different players down on the field. Two for Western Kentucky, as well as two for Army. What a wild play all the way around. That's one of the concerns you have when you have a new center in there. There was a poor exchange between Noah Knapp and Anderson. Anderson able to save the day, still make the pitch, get it out there to Robinson, and be able to get down there. Watch, watch the exchange. Hard to tell from there. I don't know if Knapp got the ball all the way up, but Anderson secured it. Well done. They got great blocks on the perimeter. Barnard got one. Brandon Walters got one. And then Robinson almost scored again, very similar to his touchdown earlier. Which went for 25. Now, the injuries here, one of the players that was down on that play was the left tackle, Jordan Law. Now, he has walked off to the Army sideline. Beanie Bishop, the nickelback for Western Kentucky, was one of the two for the Hilltoppers. Brandon Walters was also down. He has now been helped off to the Army sideline. This is the Bishop part where he got hurt. Ooh. Took a lot of, uh, he took a brunt of the blow there with the side of his head. Sticking his nose in there to try to make that tackle. I don't know if I've ever seen that before. Four guys on one play, well, two for each team. And, it, and, it, and four different parts of the field as well. Right, one at the line of scrimmage, one on the block, one on the tackle. Tina's going to be busy. And there's, a, and there's another Western Kentucky player who is now being helped off as well, who's surrounded by his teammates over there. So can't quite make out the number as Bishop is starting to stretch out. From a football standpoint, it's first and goal from the three for Army, which is obviously a great place to be in. And with Booby Law out, They'll put Cam Holloway in. I just referenced him. He's a senior who's gotten some time other years and played a bunch last week. So this is their depth. Ward and Holloway. I think they'd start to get a little bit nervous if they lost one more. Well, they're missing tackles to begin with from injuries from camp. It is Atkins behind Anderson from the three. He gets the handoff, leads forward. Touchdown, Army. Capping off a 10-play drive that goes more than six minutes with a three-yard score, and they're back in front 27-14. It's just the fullback dive. He slides off. What an awesome down block by A.J. Howard. Gosh, I love watching the slot backs for Army block. They're so good at it. That run right there by Adkins reminded me a lot of Sandon McCoy, the B-back near the goal line the last couple years. And they've had some issues with the snap on the extra point. That one was fine. Brooks Jose, the holder, has done a great job all afternoon. Get the push-ups flowing. 28-14, Army on a three-yard score from the fullback. The 2001 Army-Navy game held significant meaning. Played two and a half months removed from the tragic events of 9-11. President Bush dressed the Army team in the locker room pregame. And the second half started Amari Thompson, 96 yards on the kickoff return to put Army up 23-3. Black Knights would never look back. Todd Perry in his second year got the Gatorade bath. Army would get to sing second on an unforgettable day in this rivalry's history. And we are 91 days to go in the countdown to America's game, the Army-Navy game, presented by USAA on CBS Sports. One of my favorite days of the year, every year. 
20 years ago, that game held even extra special meaning. As we remember everything that happened on September 11, 2001. Army coming off yet another 10-play drive. Their third of the game resulting in three touchdowns. That is Daywood Davis back to receive with Bishop injured, and there's a flag. Well, that's a big, that's a mental mistake right there. They've been calling fair catch every time. Just gave him a bunch of yards. Free kick, out of bounds, kicking team. Ball being placed at the 35-yard line, first down. I mentioned Davis was back there because of the injury to Bishop down to Tina. All right, Jason, let's start with safety A.J. Brackway. He has left the field. There was a lot of concern surrounding him. We don't want to assume what the injury was. He did walk off on his own, but one of the trainers wasn't happy when he started to take off on his own. Beanie Bishop, they stretched him out, and he appears to be getting work done on his lower back. They rubbed some substance on it, So, but he is up, and he did give the thumbs up to a couple of his teammates. I'll give you an official update when I can. All right, thank you, Tina. Quickly, they get it out to Davis. Takes it out to the 42-yard line on a seven-yard pickup. This is the best starting field position of the day for Western Kentucky. Yeah, those are the hidden yards. I mean, when you kick the ball out of bounds like that, that's a that's a free 10 yards. And I can just speak to experience. You just feel better. The better your field position is when you run on the field. I don't know if it's conscious, subconscious. You just feel better when you have better field position. And off to Whittington, who cut it back. He close to the first down. Finally brought down Malcolm Morrison. And you talked about this to start this game, Ross. Uh, last year at Houston Baptist, four games for Bailey Zappi. Three of those four he threw for more than 400 yards against FBS opponents. Last week, more than 400 yards. So he's well on his way to that again as he's approaching 250. Yeah, you see Eric Smith. He did a really nice job getting in on that play. I mentioned, by the way, they call him Bam Bam. You know that was my nickname growing up? I did not know that was your nickname. Not because I hit Like things. as a baby or like two weeks ago? No, when I was a baby, they would put me in the high chair, and I knew that meant food was coming, so I would just bang my high chair. Army needs to bang the running back right here. They put Belgian as a fullback, and they throw it out to Jared Stearns. Beautiful play design for a first down. Stearns with six catches on the afternoon, including a touchdown, and he has that connection with Bailey Zappi coming from Houston Baptist. Four offensive players who followed offensive coordinator Zach Kitley to Western Kentucky. Yeah, I, I'm serious. I don't know if you throw that ball right there unless you have that much confidence in a connection like Kitley does with Zappi and Jared Stearns, the older brother of Josh Stearns. I mean, that's third and in inches to throw the ball all the way out there. A lot of bad things can happen. Well, we haven't even seen Josh Sturge today, but he averaged more than 30 yards a catch. That's a beautiful ball and a huge hit. Malachi Corley did everything he could to hang on to it on the stick from Broughton. And I believe at first glance, a totally legal hit by Broughton. Take another look at it. 20, middle of your screen, head out of it. Puts the shoulder right in the chest. Man, that is well done. And that really is an example of what you can do. You can still deliver a vicious blow, just do it legally. Slide the helmet to the outside and stick the shoulder in there. Perfect technique by Broughton. Well, and all around too, right? The pass was outstanding. The catch and the concentration tremendous yes. all around. Good point. He picked up nine, so it's second and short, Zappi. Been on fire here to start the third quarter. Down two scores. Rushed out of the pocket. Cockrell was on his heels and he just threw it away. Now he was out of the pocket. He got to be on the line of scrimmage. It'll bring up third down and short. Good coverage that time by the Black Knights. They're playing a zone coverage. Moore and Cunningham were both deep in the middle of the field. Zappi did not feel comfortable throwing it. You know, you'd expect them to run in these situations, Jason, but they just have so much confidence throwing that ball out real quick. Well, they brought in the two extra offensive linemen just like last time. And Belgian again goes in to play fullback in front of Cofield. Zappi this time with the quarterback keeper, and it is a first down. Best short yardage play in football. Quarterback sneak. Now Zappi's helmet came off on that play, so he will have to go sit for one play. We saw this earlier in the game with Christian Anderson and Jamel Jones came in. So it is Zappi to the sideline and Carson Baker 
Another transfer on this Western Kentucky team that has 28 of them. He last year started four games at San Diego State. So does Army heat him up? About to find out. Now he hands it off. It is Whittington. Stiff arm, not going to work. Quabina Bonsu was on him the whole time. Ross of maybe half a yard, it'll bring him second and ten. I like Woody being aggressive there, the D coordinator for Army, and saying, you know what, they're probably going to just hand it off. Let's try to get a tackle for loss here, and if they don't, maybe we can get pressure on a quarterback that's just coming in cold like Baker. That's Corley in motion. Zappi into the slot again, it's Jarrett Stearns inside the 30. Spencer Jones, after a pickup of about seven, third and four, coming up for Western Kentucky on the Army 29-yard line. Watch the right guard, right tackle. They pull one way to take the defense that way, and then the other three offensive linemen get out in front for the screen. Boy, that's a really cool design there, and very likely four down territory here for the Hilltoppers. They don't have to get it here. Do hand it off. Nope, Zappi kept it himself and a bad throw. Now they say Stearns did catch it down at the 29 yard line, but his knee was on the ground, so it is fourth down. Braden Narvison has the distance to go 46, but down two scores and the Western Kentucky defense unable to get off the field. It does feel like a must go situation. Now they may review this. I mean, it's it was it was the ruling free. on the field is a forward pass that was incomplete. It is fourth down. It was for no gain, so it was really immaterial other than maybe the clock keep moving. And Please this, reset the game clock to 4:54. That's where you 4 go. 4:54. This is an absolutely gigantic play, and I think Army's going to bring pressure. You cannot expect that your guys will be able to cover. The ruling of a forward incomplete pass is under further review. All right, so we'll take a look at this a little bit more. I don't know why. Well, it, it really doesn't make a difference. Well, the only reason that it would make a difference, if it's a backwards pass that has immediate recovery by Army, right, then it would be a turnover. That would be the only reason that it would matter. But to your point, I mean, it, it, as, it does look like an incomplete pass pass it does look like the ball bounces off the grass yeah I mean I think it was incomplete but again I mean what are we even talking about half a yard here this is one where if I was in charge of the replay I'd say you know what it look you can see the black pellets come up he didn't catch it watch the black pellets come up right there the rubber pellets so it's an incomplete pass. They got it right when they overturned it on the field. I'm not sure why they felt the need to look at it again. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. It's fourth down. So thank you, Bob Sokolowski, our replay official, for moving fast on that one. And But, but what it has done, Ross, is it gave Tyson Helton a chance and Zach Kitley to come up with a better fourth down play. Gave him longer time. Yeah, it also gave Nate Woody a chance to figure out exactly what he wants to do here. And he's got guys like Jalen Jacobs, 48, Nate Smith, 44 out there. He's got his pass rushers out there. I would expect pressure because Zappi usually finds someone if they don't get any pressure on him. Army got a fourth down stop in the first half. Zappi with pressure, trying to get in the end zone. Incomplete. He tried to force it in, but Cedric Cunningham all over Jared Stearns, and it's a turnover on downs again. Well, they only brought four, and they brought Eric Smith late. But as has been the case, Andre Carter, 34, made him throw it before he wanted to. Spencer Jones in there, Cedric Cunningham in there, and the Black Knights hold. They're back on offense next. Just about 50 miles from the Freedom Tower in Manhattan, the site of the deadly terrorist attacks 
20 years ago. Jason Horowitz, Ross Tucker, as we go downstairs to Tina Servasio here in West Point. Well, Jason, there's something new here at Mikey Stadium this year. Feltman's of Coney Island is the official hot dog of West Point. And Feltman's is a company owned and operated by West Point graduates. The CEO is retired Army officer Joe Quinn, West Point class of 2002, who did four tours in Iraq and Afghanistan. Now, Joe, a senior basketball player here at Army back in 2001, lost his 23-year-old brother Jimmy on September 11th. He was on the 104th floor of the North Tower working for Cantor Fitzgerald. In the years before Jimmy was killed, he would tell his brothers, Joe and Michael, they should start a business together. And that is now Feltman's. And later today, Joe will be recognized as the Mets Yankees, at the Mets Yankees game, as the veteran of the game. And Jimmy's favorite team was the Mets. And every year, right around September 11th, the family holds a Jimmy Quinn Mets tribute game. And it includes t-shirts where all profits of sales benefits Feltman's Three Brothers Foundation, supporting veterans and service members. And I do know the CMO of Feltman's is retired Captain Rob Bachman of West Point class of 2012. He is here today. I've been able to talk to them. And uh, this is a very special day for the Quinn family and also Feltman's here now at Mikey Stadium. Tina, thank you very much. And they were there at Ground Zero as part of the ceremony, reading off the names, reading Jimmy Quinn's name earlier today as they have done each of the 20 years after 9 11. Here at West Point, 28 14, 446 to go in the third quarter. Not a lot of penalties today, only one on Army. Anderson pitches to the outside. Raheem Murphy, who had a touchdown catch in the first half, runs for four. Now, Bram second down and short for Army. And, and, and Western Kentucky has not been able to stop this Army offense since the first quarter. Yeah, good to see Booby Law back out there. They actually pulled both guys on the left side. Let's watch the big guys hunt here. Get outside. Go, Booby. Decent block. Ooh, yeah, got a little bit better of a block there. Murphy would have gotten the first down, but Booby Law is really as gifted of an offensive lineman as they've had. He's still only a sophomore, long, athletic. From Nashville here on second and short, Christian Anderson spins side of the tackle. Jawan Jones made the stop. And it is a first down. As we take a look at today's Mercedes-Benz player profile, D'Angelo Malone, as you mentioned earlier in the game, Ross, all active players with 25 sacks. He was the player of the year for defense for Conference USA in 2019, and he's the preseason defensive player of the year here in 2021. Well, what's kind of crazy looking at Western Kentucky, he is one of four guys or three guys on defense that have four letters, four letters at Western Kentucky. A lot of these guys taking advantage of the extra year of eligibility after COVID. You don't often see guys with four letters, four varsity letters playing college football. Buchanan curse through the middle, and he picks up nine more yards. But to your point about that, remember every single player around the country last year from in terms of eligibility did not count. So there are players around the country this year that will be in their sixth year. Some will be in their seventh year of college athletics. Yeah, I mean, there's five guys for Western Kentucky in their sixth year. You know, the starting running back, Adam Cofield, Amari Alexander, Bo Wilson, Jeremy Darvin. I mean, a bunch of these guys are in their sixth year of college football. And we talked to both schools about that this year. Remember, Western Kentucky on top of that's got 28 transfers and obviously a different story here at West Point. Not part of how this program has worked. Good play to take a shot if Brent Davis wants to dial up a play action pass. He doesn't, it's inside. It is there another first down. Jawan Jones just fighting with Buchanan. You know, I think being up two scores, I think Jeff Munkin just said, hey, just, just keep that clock moving. I mean, they probably could have taken a shot there on second and real short, but Army probably starts to grind clock as early as anybody in the country. There's 17 minutes left in the game, and the more they can shorten it, the better. They should still already start to snap it with less than five seconds left. You can hit 14 carries for 40 yards in the touchdown. On the sideline now, it's Barnard. Anderson takes the hit from D'Angelo Malone as well as Jeremy Darvin. But again, it's that six yard pickup on first down. Well, it's time now for a view of the core, brought to you by M Core. They have 
have certainly been loud today. And you talked about this at the start of the game in reference to we were eligibility last year in the season that was with the co with COVID-19 in 2020. Uh, you talked about it. The cadets were spread out to have social distancing in, in Mikey Stadium last year. That is a different story this year as Robinson gets the edge, has another first down. And he's chased down from behind again by Jawan Jones. They love getting Robinson in space as much as they can. Let's watch the big boys on the right side this time. It's a showcase play, Jason. You don't get many as an offensive lineman. Get out in front, everybody can see you. Your mom, everybody sees you out in front. Dean Powell got a block. Fanukin got a block. We got a first down. I think the only time my mom referenced me after the game is if I got a penalty or there was like a screen pass or I pulled. Well, she sent you a nice text today. Brought down hard hit on Anderson. Caleb Oliver, who was in the game for A.J. Brathwaite, who went to the locker room. And the Black Knights can take this to the quarter, and that's exactly what they'll do. And Although now it looks like there's a Western Kentucky defender who's down. He gets back up. Now Jeremy Darvin, who now hustles off to the sideline. He's one of those players you're talking about who is a sixth-year senior. Sixth year at Western Kentucky. Honorable mention call Conference USA the last two years. Mentioned Caleb Oliver who made that stop in for A.J. Brathwaite. He is officially out for the rest of this game. Tina gave us the report earlier as they were taken into the locker room. The Ross, they took off so much of the clock in the third quarter as Army often tries to do. And so the Black Knights will head to the fourth with a two touchdown lead. Chance to get to 2-0 on the young season, up 28-14, and that's the end of the third quarter. You're watching College Football on CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Horrors of September 11, 2001, and the countless lives lost will forever be a part of our country, but so too will the bravery, courage, and selflessness shown by all the first responders. We are forever grateful for those heroes who sprang to action 20 years ago today. Jason Marwitz, Ross Tucker, happy to welcome you back inside Mikey Stadium. Special place to remember September 11, 2001. Tina Servasio down on the field. And across like so many Americans, people have personal ties, and certainly you do to September 11, 2001. Yeah, absolutely. That was my wife's first day of work. Uh, she was downtown in Manhattan. She was actually in the South Tower until like 8 30 then she had a meeting thankfully at 60 wall street it was her first day jay so i didn't even know exactly where she was working i just remember calling all day and getting circuits busy circuits busy it wasn't until late afternoon early evening that i finally knew she was okay and you and i in our generation certainly you were just out of college i was in college fully well aware of 2001 september 11 2001 but you know talking to jeff munkin this week for the cadets here they chose to serve in a post 9 11 world and made that decision knowing what they were going into and how different the commitment is now than what it was before 9-11. Yeah, and it's really kind of crazy to think about, you know, the most notable and memorable day of our life. Don't remember it, it was before their time, but yet their lives have been so greatly impacted by it. Well, that third quarter, Army owned the time of possession. So more than 30 minutes chewed up by this Army offense in this ballgame. 28-14 the lead here in the opening minute on a third and two for Christian Anderson. And like they have done so many times today, just hand it off to Jacoby Buchanan. He's got the first down. And, and Ross, Western Kentucky in, in the first half got off the field on a takeaway. But for the most part of this game, they have not stopped Army's offense. No, they haven't. And one of the things Army does so well is those short yardage runs. They've got big splits. I'll get a chance to show it here on one of these plays, Jason, but when they are going to the fullback, a lot of times they'll widen their splits out even a little bit more to give themselves a little more space for that fullback to hit it up in there. Pitch out to A.J. Howard, and he's tracked down. Trey Shaw raced out there to make the tackle. 
But again, to your point, if if you are Jeff Munkin, you know that Western Kentucky can score fast. They've had a pair of drives that they've scored touchdowns in less than two minutes. So yes, you are in scoring territory. You are in the red zone, but you want to take. You've only got 18 yards to go, but not only do you want to score a touchdown, you want four minutes off the clock. Score slowly. It's a concept that Black Knight fans are used to. It's not really a concept that Western Kentucky lives by. <laughs> they, if they, when they score, they score quickly. This time it's Anderson back to pass. The pressure from behind. He lost the football. Jawan Jones came off the edge. Army recovers, but that is a huge defensive play for the Richard Jr. from Georgia. Well, I can't believe that the Black Knights called a pass there. I mean, they can't stop him on the run. That was almost a disaster. Watch Jawan Jones Ruling here. I think it's going to be Zach fumble. Ward Recovered by that the tries offense. to block him, the left guard. And he steps in, but he gave himself a bad angle when he stepped in like that. Jones, terrific job. Tomahawk chopping that ball out. An army averts disaster, but now it's going to be very difficult for them to get a touchdown. Now it's third and long. They are in field goal range, which would make it a three-score game. Anderson comes back on himself, has some space inside the 15, and he picks up the first down. So on a third and 12, Christian Anderson takes it for 15 and a first down. Gigantic play, the first time they've run that quarterback counter. Watch the right guard and right tackle. They're going to pull this way and lead the way. Fake one way, here comes Dean Powell. He gets a seal. Fanukin dives for the outside thigh pad. That is so well done. A lot of times, you don't even need to get the guy down. Died for the outside thigh pad. I love it. They got to protect their legs. He's not going to be able to get off and make the play. That's a gigantic, perhaps game clinching play by the Black Knights. 15 carries, 86 yards for Anderson. Keeps it one more time. Cuts it up inside, takes a couple of hits. Michael Pitts holding around at his ankles, but he is thrown down inside the four. Christian Anderson has played a whale of a ball game. He has played extremely well. So happy for that young man. Been in and out of the lineup the last couple years. He looks noticeably thicker and more confident to me. And that's what happens as you get older. You know, sometimes you forget, you know, these are 18, 19, 20, 21 year old young men. He was a senior from the Bronx. Had one start in 2019. Last year, with all the injuries that happened at the position, played in seven games. But this has been his game, and he hands it off to Buchanan. His second touchdown of the ball game. Right through the middle. Now, there is a flag that flew from behind. And so we will see if this touchdown Holding. stands. Offense, number 70. Ten-yard penalty, replay second down. Well, you said they fired the Buchanans. Do they stop doing push-ups when the touchdown gets called back? I don't think the Cannon guys got the memo about the flag. And, you know, in a weird way, obviously, Army would have liked to have scored the touchdown. Zach Ward, you see the left guard right there, just kind of hooked under there. With needs to take more time off the clock here. And to your point, if you're just joining us, Connor Bishop hurt early in the ball game. The cart did come out for the starting center. The 10-yard penalty takes it back, but again the hole. Now they can fire the Buchanans. They still got it inside, and this time it's from 13 yards out for the touchdown. Inside trap. Reminds me of the old two-dive in high school. I love it. Gave Zach Ward a chance to make up for it. Look at the big splits in there. Ward right up in there for the inside trap. Get up in there. Boom. Good job, Ward. Jacoby Buchanan is not used to that much space. No. <laughs> I'm not used to seeing him run that far. Extra point is through. Third touchdown of the season, his second of the day. One where the Army offense has been unstoppable against Western Kentucky. College football on CBS Sports Network is sponsored by Mercedes-Benz. The best or nothing by Encore, proud partner of Army West Point Athletics. And by The Exchange, 
Army football is proudly sponsored by The Exchange. 35-14 as we welcome you back inside Mikey Stadium. Army offensively has put on a clinic. Last drive, 14 plays. Again, more than 70 yards. Again, more than nine minutes off the clock. And Ross, there are two pair of games this year. And again, this one's not over yet, but 17 drives with 11 touchdowns for a team that, you know, cannot afford more than a couple of plays that only go for a couple of yards. And they have been so impressive against a couple of teams that coming into the year you thought would present major challenges, at least down to the wire. Fair catch called for, and they'll bring it out to the 25-yard line. Our coverage continues. As soon as we are done here, Connecticut, Purdue for the first time ever. They go on the gridiron. Then at 6.30 Eastern, Houston, new to the Big 12, by the way, against Rice in the Bayou Bucket Classic. And it all wraps up with SEC and Mountain West tonight. Vanderbilt and Colorado State both looking for their first wins of the season. Only on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. Certainly newsy this week with UConn, who we will see next week here come to Army. The loss to Holy Cross last week, which you and Tina were part of the broadcast with Ed Cohen and Randy Edsel on Sunday. Now that he will retire at the end of the season, but then on Tuesday, 48 hours later, the announcement that he would retire effective immediately and not coach today against Purdue. Yeah, that was a, a tough week for UConn. Randy Edsel is a, a really good man, and what he did his first stint in particular at UConn is unbelievable to go from FCS to the Fiesta Bowl in 10 years. Zappy. Trying to get to the sideline, that's broken up. Julian McDuffie on the tip, Mitchell Tinsley, the intended receiver. It's a really good job by McDuffie. You know, he doesn't get his name called as much as Jabari Moore, because Jabari Moore plays to the boundary, the single receiver side, typically. And that would not be good. Now they've lost, Army has lost key parts today. The Sean Eckert and Connor Bishop, and that is Nolan Cockrell, the heartbeat of the defense. We'll step aside. Thirty-five, fourteen, Army, the lead at Western Kentucky. Nolan Cockrell walked off under his own power. His tent, as they will evaluate their nose guard, as we take a look at the Cooper Tire. Game summary, over 300 yards rushing for Army. But again, it's the time of possession. Ross, they averaged 30. Duffy hit him around the shoulders. But they went right the spot where Cockrell left the field. Right. 13-yard pickup for the freshman running back. And they go back to the ground again. Whittington didn't play in the game last week. Fort Valley, Georgia, they are very excited about his explosive playability. He picked up four on that first down run. It's kind of interesting with Darius Richardson in there at nose tackle for Army. Yeah, you'd think that Western Kentucky would want to try to take advantage of that, but they're down 21 points with 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter. They can't really afford to spend very much time running up the middle. They got to throw it. Well, to highlight that, this is just the second drive of the second half for the Hilltoppers. Again, it's out to Jared Stearns. Got a good block. A sound tackle made by Jabari Moore, and he was finished off by the captain, Broughton. Boy, that was close. You got to be very, very careful. He was still on the field of play, but you don't want to give him the extra 15 yards. I've been very impressed, however, today by the physicality of the Army defensive backs. I mean, really the whole team, but the DBs for the Black Knights, they are, they are bringing it when it comes to tackle. Grant trying to get off the field. He didn't. There's a flag that flew. Wow. Kai Robichaud, uh, Robichaud picks up the first down anyway, but this is going to be a penalty against Army for too many men on the field. It is. Now, they got the first down Illegal anyway. Substitution. Two, substitution, defense, 12 players on the field, five-yard penalty, results in a first down. Yeah, it was Ryan Duran trying to All right, here we go. Off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Boom! I love doing that for some reason. Counting? Like, well, nobody, everybody <laughs> believes me. I don't really need to do that, but for some reason, I don't know. I just enjoy doing that quick counter thing when there's too many guys on the field. What kind of eye drops you think Jeff Munkin's using on the sideline? The kind that when your eyes are dry, I guess. Zappy taking a shot down the field. It's incomplete. A lot of contact. Corley had a step, but the ball was underthrown. 
Malcolm Morrison in coverage for Arby. So this is so well done by Malcolm Morrison. Watch the right side of your screen. He's going to run with number two down the middle. Now, Morrison's more of a DB. I think that's a good no call. I really do. I would rather err on the side of letting him play. He didn't turn around, but I don't think he interfered with Corley's ability to catch that football. This time it's happy again getting out of the pocket. He has shown his ability to escape today, and he'll step out of bounds at the 36 with Cunningham bearing down. He picked up five. Now there is a flag back behind, and there is a Western Kentucky helmet off as well. And if this is illegal hands to the face, he doesn't have to leave the field of play. Personal foul. Hands to the face. Defense, number 96. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. So that is Richardson, who's in there for Cockrell. Watch the left side of your the screen. Game. The foul calls the helmet to come off. Well, that's not Richardson right there. That looks like to me it's either Fry or Duran pushing Spencer back, getting the hands up there in the headgear. In college football, if your helmet comes off, you got to come off for a play unless it's a penalty that caused it to come off. Yeah, they had the wrong number. It is. It was Duran with the hands to the face, so which is why their starting left tackle can stay on the field. Too much time. It can. The offensive line has done a good job today. And Zappi found a wide open receiver in the corner. Mitchell Tinsley was hanging out in the end zone just waiting for the football. And that's a brilliant play by Zappi for 21 yards in the score. He was jumping up and down. Watch the top of your screen. This is a, it's a dropped coverage. Watch him jump up and down like my daughters when they want their iPad. <laughs> I mean, that was unbelievable right there. Boy, that is really going to burn up Nate Woody and the Army coaches. They've had a couple of dropped coverages today. It's a bad look. They didn't have any last week against Georgia State. So they got what they had to have. The extra point is good. And now it brings the question for Western Kentucky with a defense that hasn't been able to get off the field. But we see an onside kick on the other side. But it's the touchdown that set it up. Still a 14-point lead. Today at 3.30 Eastern on CBS, we head to the home of Arby's rival, Annapolis, for another game between two service academies on this anniversary of a day that our country will never forget. Air Force and Navy in the first leg of the Commander and Chiefs Trophy Series. It is today on CBS. Schedule all three this year for the Commander in Chiefs Trophy will be on CBS. Army and Air Force from Texas this year on November 6th at 11.30 a.m. Eastern. And then the Army Navy game coming your way in December. That game, of course, last year right here at Mikey Stadium for the first time since 1943. We asked about the onside kick with eight minutes to go and Army's ability to put a six minute drive together. That's in fact what Western Kentucky does, but Army covers it up. A.J. Howard was there as well. Guess who? Nope, it was Markel Broughton. The captain. Markel Broughton again. You know, watch the, here's the lesson here. Watch how aggressive he is. Number 20, left side of your screen. He attacks it. Football is a sport in which aggression is rewarded. Quite frankly, life is a game in which aggression is rewarded. But terrific job. You can't wait for it, Jay, on an onside kick. You have to go attack it. You have to go get it. Tyson Helton did the right thing by going for the onside kick, but Broughton was all over it. Mark Hel uh, Markwell Broughton has had a whale of a ball game. So too is that man. We take a look at today's Surf Pro Game Changer, and it is the quarterback, Christian Anderson. Been brilliant throughout the course of this afternoon. He really has. I, I mean, running, getting them in the right plays, throwing the football. Even when Tyre Tyler comes back from whatever his injury is that he's missing today, it's going to be hard to get Christian Anderson off the field. I mean, the way he's playing, how do you? Five of six throwing it, 77 in the air, 87 on the ground. That is a heck of a day for an option quarterback.
keep it himself again. That's Jacquez Evans hanging around on his ankles. Well, and, and you bring up that question then about for the Army offense moving forward as they face the third and five. Last week, the plan was play Tyler first two series, play Christian Anderson after that, and he'll go from there. Now, it just so happened that Tyler got hurt on the second series. Moving forward, if that was the plan, this is a tough one to take Christian Anderson off the field because he has put this offense moving in motion consistently this entire ball game. It'd probably be the opposite. Probably be start Anderson and then bring Tyler in as a change of pace. But right now, they're trying to clinch this game. It's still only a two-score game. Third and a long five. My guess is they'll run it here and try to get to fourth and short. Eight of ten on third down. They do go up the middle. They pick up most of that five yards to the 36. And a timeout taken by Western Kentucky with 6.24 to go. Western Kentucky. So it may seem early Media in the game, out. but trying to preserve as much time as possible. Armed Forces football is proudly supported by ServPro. Jason Horwitz, Ross Tucker, Tina Servasio back with you in West Point. It's fourth and two, 6.24 to go. Army in a 35-14 lead, Western Kentucky. Cut it to two scores, a fourth and two for Christian Anderson, and the offense back out on the field. Well, listen, Cade Barnard's out there, so I think this is going to be a quarterback zone with Anderson following Barnard. If they were going to run the fullback, I think Buchanan would be in. So I'm predicting a quarterback zone with Barnard as the lead blocker. And frankly, if I know that, Western Kentucky should be thinking that too. No. Army is a perfect five for five on fourth downs. Two for two today. Ooh, maybe a hard count here? Yeah. That's exactly what you said, and Pitts knew it. He jumped through the middle of the line in the transfer from Cincinnati with the biggest defensive play today for Western Kentucky. by Michael Pitts. Yeah, it's almost a giveaway with when, who they have in the game sometimes at fullback. They were all over it. Watch these two guys right here. Anderson's going to take it, pull it back, and then what a terrific job by Pitts. Wow. He just discarded the blocker before making the play and violently taking Anderson to the turf. Hilltoppers are in business. They got a real shot at this thing now. Yeah, it certainly feels a little bit different, right? They scored. They went for the onside kick. They get a fourth down stop. And it's Zappi back to the air. Eludes the pressure. Wanted to dump it down. This time he goes down. Andre Carter again. Jalen Jacobs there as well. But if they give some of that to Carter, his sack total continues to rise. Andre Carter is a rare player. Watch him the whole time. He's a stand-up player. Nice move with the chop. Gets the pressure. Falls down. Get back up, Andre. Get back up. Look at that. Gets it on the sack. They said he's relentless at practice. He's relentless in the games, too. The coverage for Army right now is spectacular. That was a covered sack, and Zappi's in trouble and has to throw it away. There have been many times in this ball game, Ross, where he's had five, six seconds to throw, but there's nowhere to throw. No, that was a terrific job by the Army secondary and even the underneath defenders. And that time, Eric Smith was able to get some pressure as well. This is four down territory, so they've got two downs to get 14 yards. Don't have to get all 14 here. Can split the difference. Nolan. Cockrell is back on the field for Army after leaving a couple of drives. This is Zappi on the high snap. Settles into a throw. What a grab. Tinsley had settled outside. The ball was thrown inside, and he ripped it away from the defender for a first down. That's a pickup of 22. Isaiah Morris, the dime back, is out there right now, and he was slow to react to that one. And so they'll go quickly. Taking a shot down the field, working on Morris, it's Tinsley again. Mitchell Tinsley has been huge in the fourth quarter. Had a touchdown grab, and he's got the Hilltoppers inside the red zone. There must be an injury to McDuffie, because McDuffie is out of the game, and Morris is in there, and that's back-to-back -back plays where they have attacked Morris. You know, they know who the starters are, and when they see a new number in there, they're going to find out how good that new number is 
and so far Tinsley's been better on back to back plays. Now there's an Army defensive player down as well. Well, so a couple of things that work here is they attend to Andre Carter back at midfield. And that is not good either because he is by far their best pass rusher. And that's exactly what they need right now. So the things at play here with 521 to go in the fourth quarter. Army had a 21 point lead, had 30 minutes of possession. And Western Kentucky had not stopped since the, first, since the first quarter. All of a sudden here, Ross, in the last three minutes, Western Kentucky touchdown, Western Kentucky fourth down stop, and Western Kentucky inside the 10 against an Army defense that's starting to lose some of these players here that are key to this squad. Absolutely. That third and 14 was gigantic. They got the fourth down stop on D, the third and 14 on offense. And Carter, you can see, is a former high school receiver. Still just kind of learning that defensive end position, but he looks like a big time prospect to me. He's right there. They like having him rush over the left guard. He's got, ooh, he got a lot of body laying on top of him. 358 yards passing for Bailey Zappi and a couple of touchdowns. Direct snap here, maybe. It is, in fact, that. Cofield hands it to Zappi, who throws it into the turf. Spencer Ooh. Jones was bearing down on him. Now, he's pointing at a receiver to say that's not intentional grounding, but here comes the flag. Now, they shifted Cofield to take the direct snap, only to hand it back to the quarterback. By rule, only the player that controls the snap may legally ground the ball outside the tackle box. Intentional grounding, offense number seven. Spot of the foul, loss and down. It's second down. Well, really, it's it's on Zappy, number four. You'll see, he hands it off to him. I don't know if he's going to throw the reverse or not. Nothing's there, so he just throws it away. Frankly, whether he got that snap initially or not, that would have been grounding. So it's the loss of down. On the intentional grounding, pressure comes. He stands in the pocket. Stearns breaks a tackle, and we got a ball game with 4.58 to go. Western Kentucky is back in it on another touchdown pass. Houston Baptist transfer to Houston Baptist transfer. Army went with an all-out blitz, zero blitz. That means it's man-to-man -man coverage behind it. You got to make the tackle. Malcolm Morrison tried to make a play on the football, wasn't able to do it, and not able to make the tackle either. So good job there by Zappi getting that ball out quickly against the all-out blitz. We have a one-score game with 4.58 to go. The ninth catch of the day for Jared Stearns is his second touchdown of the day. It's an event that has shaped our military and just the direction and the focus of our military in the last 20 years. And so they're very much a part of the history because of it. We talk a lot here as an institution, and we have chances to reflect as a team, and talk about who we represent and what we represent. But it's crystal clear to them the importance of putting on that uniform and representing not only the black, gray, and gold, but the red, white, and blue. And they know how important that is and, and who they're playing for and what they're playing for. Trying to finish all of that off today on the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attacks. Jeff Munkin knew all week long the intensity that would be brought up with the emotion after the touchdown, expecting the onside kick. They see it, they get it again. Markwell Broughton, who recovered the last one, jumped on this one as well. Terrific job by Broughton being aggressive yet again and attacking it. But I love the decision, the onside kick, for two reasons. Number one, 
obviously you have some percentage chance to get the ball if Broughton would have mishandled it. But number two, you know, you almost feel like Jason, if Army's going to score, you want them to score faster. You know, you'd, you'd almost rather them have a short field and score as opposed to just run this entire clock out. I would expect Tyson Helton to be aggressive with his timeout usage again. Which, remember, he did on the last drive with six and a half minutes to go, wanting to preserve all of that. The handoff to Buchanan. Jeremy Darvin right there for the immediate stop, maybe a yard on first down. So Western Kentucky Ross on the last drive got a fourth down stop for the defense to get off the field for the first time in this game since a fourth down stop in the first quarter. I am extremely impressed by what we've seen from Western Kentucky the last couple series. I really thought that they were gassed, they were tired, and that Army had worn them down, but it's like they've gotten the second wind. Play clock was taken under five. Anderson and Kincaid came up from the safety spot to make the stop. Again, Jaden Hunter was there too, D'Angelo Malone. Second charge timeout, Western Kentucky. And there is that second timeout, timeout with 4.10 to go here in the fourth. Is this where you like the timeout? Yeah, I, I think so. You, you, I think you always are better off using them earlier as opposed to later as you look at the rest of Army's schedule. You and I will be here the next two weekends. Yep, UConn coming to town. They've got Purdue as soon as we are done. UConn and Purdue on CBS Sports Network here immediately following us. Miami of Ohio today is playing a tough game with Minnesota. Ball State, you're defending Mac Champs, uh, who's got Penn State today. So there's a lot to like there, the middle of October with the Wisconsin Wake Forest. It's an opportunity here for Army to have another special season. But they got to finish this one off for us. A 21-point lead early in the fourth quarter is one of those ones you've got to finish off. And I wonder now if we'll see Army go to the air. Earlier when Christian Anderson got sacked, I said, I don't think we'll see them throw again. They might have to now. Well, they're a few yards beyond field goal range for Cole Talley as well, which would also make it a two-possession game. They do go to the air. But nobody's out there for Anderson to take off. Captain himself gets down inbounds. And a huge pickup on third down for Christian Anderson. That is a terrific play call because Anderson has the option to both run and pass. You'll see him boot out. The only guy really out there that he would have thrown it to is Buchanan, but Buchanan's there to block him, block for him. Buchanan actually ends up making the tackle, hits him from behind. That's one where Anderson just says, go, go, Jacoby. And now the Black Knights will really start to milk this clock. Terrific play call there by Brent Davis to get Anderson on the perimeter. He is over 100 yards on the ground today in his first start of the season. And Anderson is wrapped up around the ankles. Will Ingnott, the linebacker, making the stop? So I guess what I don't understand is why Tyson Helton wouldn't have called a timeout right there on first down. One I, remaining. I guess he's waiting until second or third down here to see how these plays play out. But I, I'd always rather stop the clock when you can. You never know if you get a fumble. You never know if Army decides to throw it, which is unlikely. I would have called timeout. Now the reality, too, Russ, with the way that they'll take the play clock down, Army gets another first down, they're going to milk the clock. They're going to they're gonna knock the clock down to zero. Anderson now with a career high in rushing yards inside the 15. He picks up four more. So 119 rushing yards for Christian Anderson, which will set up third and four. And again, Tyson Helton electing not to take that final timeout as we are inside two and a half minutes to go. Well, in Army, they've got two downs now to get four yards. I really wonder if they get stuffed here, if they would kick a field goal or if they would go for it and try to end it. Well, I think they would go for it, depending on how close they are on fourth down. Well, the field goal would put you up two scores. Nine of 12 on third down today. Barnard in usually means a quarterback run. Now puts the handoff to Barnard, and Western Kentucky does get the stop. And Tyson Helton immediately takes that timeout. D'Angelo Malone, the first to knock him to the turf. So it'll be Third fourth final, down. Charge timeout, Western Kentucky. 30-second timeout. And so now that brings up that decision if you are Jeff Munkin. Do you take the field goal to go up two scores with less than two minutes to go and the Hilltoppers out of timeouts? 
or do you keep it in the offense and a first down ends the ball game? You know, with it being three yards, I think I would kick the field goal. The ball is right in the middle of the field. You've got a good kicker in Cole Tally that you like. Now, the only thing is, is the snaps have not been great today. They've had a little bit of an issue there. I did kind of like them running the ball with Barnard there to kind of throw off the tendency, the strong tendency of Barnard to be more of the blocking back. But credit the Hilltoppers, they were ready for it. I would kick the field goal and go up by two scores here if I was Army. Which is exactly what they're doing. He's sending out the field goal unit. Christian Anderson has done his job today, both through the air and on the ground, a career high in rushing yards. And so Cole Talley on for the 31-yard attempt. He made from 22 last week. Keep your eye on the snap and hold. It's been a little dicey. Aguilar the snapper. Brooks Jose the holder. Good snap, good hold. The kick from Talley is up, and that is good. The decision pays off, and Army is back up two scores with 152 to go in the ballgame. It takes all three phases. Army got a piece of a punt earlier, which led to a touchdown. And now when they had to have it, Cole Tally tallies up a field goal to make it a two-score game and most likely put this to bed for Army, although Western Kentucky, no timeouts. They'll get the ball back here, and they can move in a hurry. Now this game's certainly not over, but Ross, two games into the season offensively for Army. Last year, 26 points a game. 43 last week at Georgia State, and now 38 today against Western Kentucky. An offense that seems multifaceted with Christian Anderson at the helm. It's been really impressive. This is a good Western Kentucky team. I think they're going to give Indiana and Michigan State a run for their money the next couple weeks. Yep, that's who they've got coming up. And they've got Indiana coming to Bowling Green, so that'll be a home game for the Hilltoppers. So 152 to go, plenty of time for Bailey Zappi to get down the field. They've scored four times today, all in under two and a half minutes. Three of those drives have been 75 yards. The question is, how fast can they score? Tally. And a fair catch called for one more time. So like many of the drives today, Western Kentucky will start at its own 25-yard line for Bailey Zappi, the transfer from Houston Baptist. Came off a 424-yard performance last week against Tennessee Martin. 372 through the air today with three passing touchdowns and one on the ground. All right, let's talk end-of-game rules for defense, for Army. You must tackle them in the field of play. The corners, and Julian McDuffie is back out there, a good sign for Army. The corners, you can't get beat deep, and the corners should have outside leverage. Make every tackle inside of them. Don't let them go out of bounds. Happy comes back over the middle. That's caught. Daywood Davis to the turf at the 36. That'll stop the clock for a moment. He got just beyond the markers for a first down. Wines inside of 100 seconds. Zappi, again, time to scan the field, and he does get him out of bounds. Corley dragged the foot across midfield, and they'll stop the clock to move the chains and with the play out of bounds. Yeah, too many yards and out of bounds. Watch his feet. Left foot's in, drags the right. Nice toe tap there by Corley. Army got no pressure there. One thing that's been consistent today is that when the Black Knights don't get pressure, Zappi has been able to find an open receiver eventually. With that throw, by the way, that is his fifth time the last six games for Zappi throwing over 400 yards. Gosh, it doesn't even feel like it. Well, the offense hasn't been on the field that much. Quick again. And he does get out of bounds. Dakota Thomas, the freshman from Georgia, his first catch of the day. See, that could have been huge for the Black Knights if they had been able to tackle him in the field of play. Jabari Moore, in my mind, has to, knowing the linebackers coming from the inside out, has to violently throw at the outside thigh pad. Make him run back inside. Zappi had his running back release. 
Now he finds his receiver back across the field. It's Thomas one more time. They're inside the 30 with 121 to go in the ball game. And McDuffie is a little bit banged up. He's going to go down to the ground, which is a smart move because they would have picked on him on that play if he had tried to tough it out. And again, 17 yards on the play. He was not in the game on that last series. And Zappi picked on Isaiah Morris to get them into the red zone. So this drive started about 40 seconds ago. So we asked that question, how fast can they get down the field? They're sliding the offensive line to Bonsu and Carter, which means they've got three for two. It's a nice job by Zappi across his body. And McDuffie just kind of got rolled up on a little bit at the tail end of that play. And right now, if you're Western Kentucky, you're saying, okay, when they bring in that 17 again, let's go after them. Well, this will be a week, Ross, where as we get ready for UConn next week, there will be a lot of questions in terms of the injuries to Army players heading into that game next week. We've seen Nolan Cockrell leave the field. Connor Bishop, the starting center, was carted off. Starting wide receiver, Sean Eckert, we've seen in crutches on the sidelines and air cast around his leg. Now multiple times here in the second half, Julian McDuffie has been helped off the field. Been a little too easy on this drive for the Hilltoppers. The one saving grace of the McDuffie injury is that it did give the Army defensive line a chance to get a blow so that they can hopefully get some pressure on Zappi here. Zappi wanted the ball. They were waiting for McDuffie to get off the field, and now it's set, and now the clock will roll. Zappi waiting in the pocket. Fans want to hold. No flag flies. Zappi racing for his life, and he gets out of bounds. He does pick up five yards on the scamper, but 13 seconds did come off the clock with 104 to go and a second down. The pressure there, Cockrell and Duran forced him out of the pocket. Yeah, there might have been a couple plays there where they could have called a hold, but I said it with the pass interference earlier. I'll say it again here. I think when in doubt, let him play. I'd rather them err on the side of letting him play than throwing a flag that might be questionable. If Jared Stearns has been his go-to receiver when they needed him most. Different set of receivers on the field right now. That's an open man. Malachi Corley again falls to the turf at the 10. That'll stop the clock to set the chains one more time. Got to tighten up now that they're in the red zone. Here comes all out blitz. Zappi throws. That is incomplete. And that is a much better outcome for Western Kentucky than it Dayton Wade caught it. You know, it's a good point. I thought it was interference by Broughton. Watch the left side of your screen. Tell me Broughton doesn't hit him here before the ball gets there. Hard to tell from that angle, right? Yeah, I mean, he's tackling him before the ball even got there. Pass interference would have been the best scenario there. Well, the those hilltoppers. But a completed catch and no penalty. Free play. This is a free play. Zappi to the end zone. Closest receiver was the linebacker, Spencer Jones, but Zappi knew he was getting a free five yards. Yep. Very smart in that situation. Offside. Defense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. So it becomes tighter windows here to try to get a touchdown. I don't think Western Kentucky would dare try to run it here, would they? That'd be devastating if they got tackled short and the clock kept going. Got the bigger pack with Zappi. That is Cofield. They're not looking around, scanning, scanning, scanning. Cannot break free, cannot break the tackle, and cannot get out of bounds. That is gigantic. Malcolm Morrison kept him in the field of play, and the clock will continue to roll. And the Army defenders are gassed. Cockrell wanted to come off there. Zappi calls for the ball. Cofield does have a wide open path to the end zone. So a lot of time came off on that play in bounds, but Western Kentucky scores with 21 seconds to go. 
So you're telling me there's a chance. I mean, watch Cockrell. He's just double teamed. Eric Smith can't fight off. I don't know what Eric Smith was doing there, just playing right behind Cockrell. If he had made that play and tackled Cofield, probably would have clinched the game for the Black Knights. So a crucial extra point here. Braden Narvison on for the PAT. He is perfect on the season. This to make it a field goal game. And he does that. So Western Kentucky, who has attempted two onside kicks so far here in the fourth quarter with 21 seconds to go, desperately wants to get the ball one more time into the hands of Bailey Zappi, who has put on another statistical clinic here today. Is the third time a charm on the onside kick? Well, how many onside kicks do you have? How many different onside kicks do you have in a week? You know tried what? two different ones today. I, I, I think two or three. I don't think you have very many. I would do the onside kick where you don't kick the ball to Markwell Broughton. I, I wouldn't even get it near Markwell Broughton. Anybody but number 20 if you're Western Kentucky. Obviously, Western Kentucky needs to do the onside kick here, recover, get to about the 30-yard line, which is the target line, for Narvison. Munson fakes one way again, kicks it right up the middle. They go away from Broughton. It's down the field. It's still loose. And Army says it has it. And the Black Knights do come away with it. <laughs> that was the kicker that just pushed for Brees Point. It was. And under the pile, that is Simon Dellinger. The tight end converted to an offensive lineman because of all the injuries to the tackles. I can't even he believe he's out there. On the hands team? Tight end hands. Uh, he's really a tackle, though, wearing number 74? Well, he used to wear number 84. Look know, at him chase that ball still, down. Oh, gosh. He looked like me at the Army tailgate trying to get one of those Polish sausages. So Army, after recovering three onside kicks, Gets one knee, Western Kentucky out of timeouts. And Ross, it's a lot tighter than it looked like it would be in the fourth, but it is an Army victory. 38-35, and for the first time in four tries, Black Knights get a victory over Western Kentucky. They finally get that Western Kentucky monkey off their back, and it might not have finished up as much as they wanted to, but a win is a win is a win. Tyson Helton is trying to get some of his players and the coaching staff away. I don't know what's going on out there. No, Tyson Helton is having some words for Jeff Munkin. Oh, I don't like this. Well, they're going to try and separate both of these teams here. Now, that last knee, there certainly was some shoving. We saw on the onside kicks of pushing and shoving along the way as well. That is the last thing you want to see. I mean, there's armed guards out there. Well, and there are coaches having to be restrained as well. That's unfortunate. This is not what you want to see. On well, that pushing and shoving is continuing. Now, they're, Jeff Munkin and his staff is trying to get the Army players over to the core. So they can sing the alma mater, and now they make their way over there as Western Kentucky is going to go back to the locker room, which is right underneath that far sideline in the set of stands. Let's take a look at this again. As we take a look at Jeff Munkin looking for Tyson Helton. Well, that's not Tyson Helton. Now he's talking to one of the assistant coaches there for Western Kentucky as then Tyson Helton comes over to talk to Jeff Munkin. Yeah, I, I don't know what was going on there. I don't care to speculate. I'm not sure. Attention tour of cadets. Your commandant would like you and to So stand that's certainly not what you expected to end that ball game, but this certainly is what you did expect, the great tradition that is the Army alma mater.
So a 2 0 start for Army to this season, the 2021 season, with a 38 35 victory over Western Kentucky. Ross, the positives that Jeff Munkin will take from this game, certainly the offense and the play of Christian Anderson and, and, and the early defensive plays that the team had for the first two and a half quarters. What he won't be happy about, certainly what happened down the stretch of this ball game with all the yards and points that Western Kentucky scored. Today. Absolutely. Some of the blown coverages and mistakes that they made late, Jeff Munkin is not going to be happy about. But you'd much rather make those corrections in a victory than you would in a loss. That is Connor Bishop there uh, in crutches and with the boot on his foot. So again, they did suffer injuries in this game. We'll have to check on Andre Carter as well, who did come back but left a couple of times. Julian McDuffie was not on the field for two of the last three drives, one of the starting corners for Army. So a lot there for Army to unpack. But again, offensively, particularly with the throwing game now with Christian Anderson, seems to be a different element. Yeah, I think that's something that Jeff Munkin is going to be very excited about and utilize moving forward. Well, Jeff Munkin is with Tina Servasio. Tina? All right, Jason, thank you so much. Coach Munkin, congratulations on the win. Western Kentucky battled you guys right until the bitter end. How did Army outlast them? Well, give that, give, give that Western Kentucky team credit. They fought all the way to the end, and our guys did too. We, we, we just made enough plays to finish it off and win it. And uh, there were a lot of things that, that uh, we didn't do as well as I hoped we would today. Things we got to do better if we're going to continue to have a chance to win. But uh, in the end, we just we made enough plays to get it done. I'm really proud of the team. We've seen Christian Anderson start and play over the years here at Army. What was different about his game today? Well, it was his game. And uh, he, he went the whole distance. I thought he ran the ball really well. Uh, made good decisions in the passing game. The, the, the play, though we didn't, uh, we didn't maximize the opportunity uh, on the on the boot play where he took it out there, was wise enough not to chunk it down the field, get a first down. Just made a lot of headsy plays. Really good reading the option and, and uh, delivering the ball. So really happy with his performance. Coach, I do have to ask, what happened after the game with the Western Kentucky coaching staff on the field? Oh, it, you know, it, it's competition. And guys get fired up. and. And, uh, and those things happen. So it, that's just two teams that really competed hard. And it came down to a three-point game. So you know, somebody had to somebody had to win and somebody had to lose. I'm glad we're on the winning side. And, and uh, so proud of our guys and the way they responded there and didn't, didn't get into any, anything uh, extracurricular. And Coach, I, I know you're into the passion of Army football. You get fans back here for the first time in two years. How did that add to the element of the atmosphere? It was fantastic. Our, our kids were excited. And, and I hope the fans enjoyed the game. We sure gave them a, a lot to hang on to their seats for. So I hope we don't make it that interesting from now on. But uh, glad we got the win. It was great to be back out here in Mikey Stadium. And you're off to a 2-0 star, Coach Monk. And thank you so much for your time. Thanks a lot. Jason, back to you. All right, Tina. And they will be back next week to take on UConn, which we will have right here on CBS Sports Network. We'll wrap up for Mikey Stadium on the other side. Army, a three-point win over Western Kentucky. Coming up today at 3.30 Eastern, we head to the home of Army's rival and Navy for another game between two service academies on this, the anniversary of September 11th, the 20th anniversary. Air Force and Navy, first leg of the Commander-in-Chief Trophy, coming up on CBS at 3.30. All right, Jason Horowitz, Ross Tucker, Tina Servacio down on the field. Ross, uh, your takeaway from a 38-35 win in which Army had a 21-point lead and had to hold on. Yeah, uh, pretty awesome day, right? I mean, the weather was awesome, all the pregame festivities, I think Army, as Jeff Munkin just said, probably made the game a little bit more entertaining, a little closer than they wanted to. But there's a lot of lessons to be learned there. And listen, when you're playing against Bailey Zappi and Western Kentucky, the game is never over. He's going to keep chucking. He's going to put numbers up like he did once again. Yeah, he had 435 yards and three touchdowns uh, through the air and then one on the ground as well. 477 they gave up today. Were very <laughs> different than the 177. Again, different offense they faced. Yeah, you know what, though? Ultimately for Army, they got the win. That's what matters. All right, they certainly have that. So they get the 38-35 win on what has been a special day here at West Point. Now for Ross Tucker, Tina Servacio, and our entire CBS crew, I'm Jason Horwitz. This has been a presentation of CBS Sports Network, the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. After the break, we'll send you out to East Hartford, Purdue, to take on UConn.